Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Don't worry, Claire will be here. You won't have to suffer me for the entire time. Uh, she's just running a little bit late. Marwin, not Marwin the mage, a far more important Marwin is just in need of a little attention. So she'll be here very shortly. Marwin is uh, Claire's dog. He sometimes makes an appearance in the stream. He's very into the, the fandom. Uh, hi to Connie and Ree in the chat. Thank you so much for coming along. I decided to jump on early because I have a couple of announcements to make. Uh, the first thing is if my voice is going in and out, <laughs> it's because I lost my voice this week. So sometimes I'll be on mute if I have to get, you know, a lot of coughing done and all that kind of thing. But it's coming back and I do have some hot honey whiskey here to keep me going. So it should be fine. Um, I yeah, I have a couple of announcements to make. Uh, the first thing I want to say Day is that I am actually on Twitter now. It's taken, you know, 10 years or however long, but uh, I finally decided to get Twitter because, um, just to let people know when we're going live, it's mainly for a Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones reasons. That's really the only reason I'm doing this. Um, so yeah, I'll be on Twitter. You'll see uh, the little icon on my channel banner. So it's there if you want. Um, I am at M Cronall because ugh, I'm an idiot and I didn't realize that it was M. Cronall. I should have been paying more attention, but anyway, it's M. Cronall. So you can go and find me there. So uh, hi Meridian, how are you? Um, so as I said, Claire will be along shortly. So don't worry, you don't have to, to listen to my Irish ass for the entire time. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, Twitter, on Twitter now. So you can head over there if you're on Twitter and you can follow me there. Uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about was uh yes uh con time con in 2019 um we are going claire and myself will be at the thrones con uk we told you that already that's in may so uh we'll be there i also told you i will be at world con in dublin i mean i'm irish so we have a free place to stay and uh, my husband's from dublin so that's handy and uh, so i'll be at world con in dublin hopefully in august I think I'm still on holidays, so hopefully that'll be okay. And I am planning to read as many of the Hugo nominees as possible and maybe even start a little book club in the new year or potentially join one if there's like a, if there's already one going. If, the, if you know of any channels that are in um, that do Hugo book clubs or science fiction book clubs, running in the run-up to Worldcon, I'd be really interested in um, discovering them. So let me know maybe in the comments if you can drop a link for me or yeah, just let me know what the name of the channel is. That'd be great. Uh, so yeah, that'll be Worldcon in August. George usually goes to those ones. I don't know. I mean, he has been to Dublin recently, so he, he I mean, I'm sure going to Dublin won't be a problem. But um, yeah, so that'll be great. Uh, it's great that it's going, you know, to the land of... Uh, Saints and Scholars and Bram Stoker and all that. So that'll be fun. And yeah, Thrones Con UK. And is there any other cons? Oh yeah, Con of Thrones in Nashville. We are going to Con of Thrones in Nashville, my husband and I. I haven't actually asked Claire. I don't even think I told Claire I'm going yet. Um, but yeah, we've um, booked our hotel. So we're just waiting to, um, we have the flights picked. I just wanna, I'm kind of a bit nervous of booking the flights in case they suddenly change the dates. And then I'm nervous to leave the flights too long in case the flights become astronomical in price. So um, I think we're just gonna book them. And if it ends up that, I don't know, something happens with the con, it gets the flights, get, the dates get changed or whatever. I don't know, maybe travel insurance will cover me or maybe we'll just get a holiday to Nashville. Um, so yeah, you'll be seeing my freckly Irish butt in Nashville, sweating profusely, no doubt, because it's the height of their humid summer. But um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be Nashville. It's July 12th to the 14th and my birthday is the 11th. So I'll be there for um, my birthday as well. So that's great. I've already made a, a, a date with one of my YouTube pals, which I'm really excited for over on my nail polish channel. So uh, and I was in Kyle's chat um, the other day with uh, Gemma and LML. So um, there seems to be a lot of people going. And I was also in the chat for 
fill the issues live stream the other day and I think there's a number of people going um, from his fandom as well so yeah I'm really looking forward to it so let me know if any of you are planning to go to Nashville because it would be great to put some faces to the names and all that kind of thing um so yeah uh the other thing I have to tell you is that dance we will start dance straight away next week uh we're launching straight into dance because the first we'll do two weeks of dance and then I'm going to Ireland for a, uh, a year I nearly said for a week so um internet coverage for me in Ireland is dismal uh to say the least so I'll be definitely uh yeah, you definitely have to take a break. I wish I didn't. I would like to keep going. But um, yeah, I'll have to take a break when I go to October, go home for October. Um, it's just not strong enough to stream. So yeah, so we'll do two weeks of dance and then we'll have a break and then we'll come back to dance. And the plan is to finish dance by the 16th of December, I think is our last dance date. But I got to say, the six chapters this week uh, it, I noticed the difference in having the extra bit of work to do. Uh, not that I didn't love it, although the Elaine chapter was a bit trying, I have to say, um, just because it's so long. I think Claire said it's the longest in the series. Um, uh, yeah, I, li I, 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 I liked the Elaine chapter. Well, more of that later. Um, yeah, the dance chapters, though, I don't want to skim through them too much because dance is the book I haven't read in the longest now. So I need to really read dance well. I miss a lot. Um, Connie says, wow, where did the year go? Yeah, I can't believe we managed to finish them all. I can't believe we managed to finish them all. Um, and I thought we would have an announcement for wins. Um, but we, we went through them pretty quickly. So I'm pretty pleased with that, actually. Um, I'm kind of impatient. And I think Claire is probably with me on that one. So uh, we, as we've said, we we will finish on Dance on the 16th. We may, we may change the schedule if the six chapters a week becomes too much. But we'll see. We'll see. I would kind of like to have it finished by the new year so that in the new year I have more time to do world con stuff if i want or actually just maybe just really do streams where we do one chapter at a time on the wins chapters so those of you that are trying to avoid spoilers for the wins can bow out of those streams obviously but we also have loads of other ideas we'd like to do the world book fire and blood is coming out in november so we have a lot to keep ourselves busy i also promised johnny the lovely johnny be crazy a few streams as well so we've got i've been talking to him about a couple of streams so i really need to get on board with that one of the streams that i was talking to him about was uh going through the locations over the last four years maybe my husband and myself have um traveled to most of the filming locations we only have spain left and we actually had been saving for a big holiday in 2019 it was either going to be a driving holiday of Spain trying to take in as many locations as possible or Con of Thrones 2019 depending on where it was going to be and when it was going to be so it falls in our summer holidays and yeah so we decided we have to go to Nashville um this, and to be honest I'm not too sad about that because uh, I can do Spain anytime and I can see those locations anytime so and probably they'll be you know they'll be using them again maybe if any, if any of the prequels are in hotter locations or anything like that um so yeah so dance anyway next week we'll be reading from Varamir to Tyrion 2 so we've two Tyrion chapters next week this is the problem with doing the six chapters at a time this sometimes happens uh, it couldn't be avoided in clash where you've got Arya chapters kind of hot on the heels of cat chapters and things like that but in dance there's a lot more povs and yet yeah, here we are with two Tyrion chapters next week and um, so yeah that's that and um, the other thing i want to talk about is uh i have it in my list now now i am struggling to see no, I think that's it, actually. I think that's everything I have there. Um, so, guys, have you been reading along with us the entire time? I know, Connie, you've been here pretty much every week. And Sunny and Barbara and AU has been dropping in. Meridian has been dropping in. You guys are brilliant. Thank you so much. I'm going to take a sip of hot whiskey. If you have any uh, questions or you want to let me know what you've been enjoying about the reread, please let me know in the chat. Oh, I know what I wanted to talk about. 
I can sometimes, sometimes I can't read my writing. Anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about con videos in the run up to Con of Thrones. I don't know if I'll be making videos at Con of Thrones. I don't think you're allowed to make that many videos at Con of Thrones unless you're on the panels. Um, so I will, oh, Ella Moore might be there. Oh, that'd be brilliant. That would be so good. Uh, yes, we'll definitely meet up if you're there. I'm thinking of bringing my Game of Thrones Monopoly as well. So if there's a hangover that needs nursing, we can play some Monopoly. Um, yeah, or yeah, so that that would be really good, Elmore. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to do some like live streams in the run up to Con to kind of, uh, kind of uh, about the excitement of what panels we might see and things like that. That would be great. Um, the animals take control of your life. Davos the leopard is doing very well. That's great, Meridian. That's brilliant. So Davos the leopard was a leopard that. Meridian named a couple of months back now, right? In, in during one of our live streams that you had to go rescue and look after. So yeah. Um Bubba's three hours from Nashville. You're in excellent Bubba. So we'll see you in Nashville for sure. Um we'll be the sweaty Irish people walking around trying to avoid the heat. That's gonna be hard. Although to be honest, I'm actually I'm actually really pleased that we're going because the heat here is dreadful and there are there nobody does air conditioning in europe they just don't it doesn't exist for people in europe so i mean we'll have air conditioning that's all we need we're really excited about that so um there will definitely be time to nurse hangovers i know kyle was talking about maybe doing a onesie um night where we all just sit and watch uh, maybe the finale of game of thrones because i'm guessing the season will already be out at that stage which would be great um so I'm hoping it'll already be over. So I'm, ex I mean, chances are, yes, hair of the dog indeed. Chances are there will be um, like big names at this. This is a quite a big venue from what what the others were saying the other night. Uh, it's such a big venue that they're maybe expecting bigger names this year, which would be cool. Um, I mean, I'm not really into the celebrity aspect of it myself, although it'd be cool to meet some of those people. Um, but I am very much interested in the panels and the vendors and all that kind of thing. That'll be good in the cosplay, although I won't take part in cosplay myself. Um, I don't know who I would play in cosplay, probably Olena Tyrell or somebody. Who would you play in cosplay, guys, if you were doing cosplay? Um, I So Elamor and Bubba, what are you looking forward to in con? I'm looking forward to meeting people big time. That's like my number one thing is looking forward to meeting people, putting faces to names and that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to being in Nashville as well because um, my mom is a big country music fan. So kind of grew up listening to Johnny Cash and um, Dolly Parton and uh, Chris Christopherson and all that kind of thing. So yeah, meeting people for LMR. Yeah, definitely. I'm really looking forward to that. And maybe we could have some pre-con streams, guys, in the run-up to it, build up the excitement. That would be fun. Um, yeah, so the saving is starting already for it. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm, I need to save my liver for a little bit. Although there is hot whiskey in the glass and there may be a glass of wine there. So we'll see. Um, yeah, so hopefully like I, I've avoided all of the leaked stuff for Game of Thrones so far. It is kind of annoying that people are putting the leaked stuff in their thumb thumbnails. Uh, like pictures and stuff like that it's kind of that's a bit annoying um but you gotta unsub until they stop doing that shit uh by the way if they're doing that for game of thrones they're gonna do that for a song of ice and fire when winds comes out they're gonna do that kind of spoilery stuff um i'm not like hell bent on like people spoiling stuff you can do that if you want that's fine just maybe give your subscribers a choice between not watching the video and maybe not clickbait everything. Is that really mean? That's probably really mean, but uh, I'm just kind of sick of it now at this stage. Um, I don't know. So like Kyle has a spoilery thing coming up later on. He hasn't spoiled anything. So like, it's great. I just know, okay, I can't watch that particular video. That's a shame, but if I don't want to be spoiled, that's my choice, but I'm going to be sub to him. So, you know, he's good at like warning people like that. So yeah, I just I'd be I'd be a bit wary when Wins comes out because I'm gonna take my time at Wins. <laughs> you won't see me for a while, I think. Um, because 
I don't want wins to be spoiled. Um, how do you guys feel about that kind of stuff? I worry about that kind of stuff that I'm going to get the book and then somebody who has like loads of time off to read it is going to, uh, yeah, I will take a break from social media, Meridian. Yeah, definitely. And I know like some of my favorite podcasters have been talking about this, that that's a genuine concern because it's for, for them, for some of them, it's their, it's like, part of their livelihood now as well and um so they can't really take a break it's not my livelihood so I can take a break that's great and um, for some people it's their livelihood and it's hard to take a break completely from social media so it'll be interesting because like this is I know dance came out in 2011 but I don't think the the media storm around dance existed in the same way it will for wins no no way um I'm not worried about the show spoiling the novels at all, Bob. I'm worried about uh, channels spoiling the novels. Um, I'm, that's what I'm worried about. Because uh, some people just don't give you the option. They just put the stuff in, in their, their thumbnail and their title. They don't give you the option to avoid the spoilers. That's my worry. Um, so, But just avoid those channels. That's what I'm going to have to do, I think. It sounds mean, but I guess that's the only choice I have. I'm not worried about the show spoiling the novels at all. Um, there's a couple of things, but not really. I will definitely binge the book to Elamore. I cannot wait. I'm going to binge it. I wonder I wonder how big is it going to be? I wonder will it come in two parts, like like dance? Because my, my version of dance is in two parts. Um, I know the German language versions, some of the kids were telling me they're in five or six parts, maybe more. Like the, because the, it takes a lot longer in German, I guess, to explain what's going along, as what's going on. But yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what how big wins is when it finally comes out. Um, I reckon we'll get an announcement next autumn. But I said that this autumn. Here's Claire. Yeah, explain Hi, Claire. What's, going on, what's going on? But yeah. Hi. So oh. Interested. Oh. You turn this I down. Can. can you hear me? Okay. Hi yes, everyone. We can hear you. Elamore says my swear jar is already set up at my house to pay for my tequila and coronas oh my god we have to get lmr swearing um <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about nashville i'm going to nashville are you yeah. what's this about? is this the big announcement that you were talking about mm -hmm. one of them i'm going to nashville when to when of to kind of thrones when next when june. next july yeah. oh my god that'll be amazing yeah, Ivan, we booked the hotel already. So we're, I want to book the flights, but I'm kind of still afraid like that. That's they a might long change the no, day trip. trip. That is a long trip, though. It's actually, it's shorter than Tokyo for us. Oh, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's not that far. It's more towards the east than you think. And I'll be flying from okay. Dublin because we can do US pre clearance in Dublin. It's kind of southeast, then, is it? Yeah, it's uh with the stopover it's 11 and a half hours oh, that's not too bad <gasps> how exciting i know i can't wait i can't wait and <laughs> going and papa's going too so that'll be fun. oh fantastic you can have a little get together and angelina a hi do you know angelina a hi she oh yeah I know she's Angie, gonna be at yeah. um, the uk one so we'll see oh, her at the brilliant. uk yeah fantastic yeah oh so um she's I was lovely also, angelina she is lovely. I was also having a little rant about people putting spoilers in thumbnails for Game of Thrones. Oh, oh for the for the for the next season or yeah, for the next season. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's... Which is fine. I don't really care about the show, but I was just saying if they're doing that for the show, they're definitely going to do it when Wins comes out. Oh, this just but it's just going to piss so many people off. I mean, I get, I understand the feeling of being. You know, I want to be the first one to state my opinion on blah blah blah, and and but it's like you just can't avoid it. There's no way of it's it's like being in it's like it it's like somebody coming into your house and screaming and shouting at you that you don't haven't invited into your house and you don't want to know what they've got to say. But you know, so you just the the option is you have to unsubscribe, yeah. which is like you know, and it's that's, a bit silly. That's a really. shame because they're kind of. I feel like the people that they're clickbaiting into watching a video mm. may not necessarily be long-term fans. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll just be so, bits of I feel just like they're rubbish. alienating 
proper like real fans not just yeah. like and i know a lot of people are into the leaks and stuff like that but i think it's a different ball game when it comes to the books and it's just something that i've been thinking about a lot lately that yeah I'm, the like, books i'm like more worried is about saying, yeah. is saying just a complete social media break when when it comes out because well it'll have to be with the books the, the, to be honest with you the tv show i'm not so bothered about because I'm not that bothered. I, 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 I honestly don't i think this is where things are going to They've already departed massively, but I think this is where it'll be. I've just look at them as two completely different mm -hmm. animals, to be honest with you. And I'm not that bothered about spoilers or theories or whatever for the TV show for season eight. Definitely but not. the book, no fucking way, no, no. way, no way. I'm gonna have, I'm, I'm gonna have to make sure that I've read it first before I go anywhere near YouTube or any like websites or anything i just yeah. i know I, it would devastate me for somebody to and spoil a massive the thing is they have like a lot of them it's their livelihood right so they have to keep yeah videos and all that kind of, and that's fine and luckily i'm in a position where they can but i i was listening yeah. to uh i think it was davos fingers talking about this or some some podcast i was listening to and they were just saying that they have to take a social media break but that's going to be hard for bigger podcasters who yeah. want not not to be spoiled but you other would people leave the fandom are not in the title and they don't put spoilery thumbnails up exactly and just, you know, i yeah. don't see why they can't do that but that's not going to win you new audience members no. i guess maybe no. i don't know i really hope they don't do it for the um yeah. just hey, just Nora, be how are you? before we get into the chapters for this week this is really strange, I have to tell you all this. You know, Marwin had his back injury last year. It's yeah. around about this time last year, actually. And since then, he's not been able to get up the stairs here behind me. He's not, he's, because they're quite steep, he's not been able to get up the stairs. Anyway, funnily enough, this week we had the Marwin, the Marwin chapter, which is like, you know, we introduced to Marwin like on a, on a much sort of more intense stage and, uh, I was sat upstairs in bed a couple of nights ago and I could just hear what sounded like somebody trying to get furniture up the stairs, but he he did it, he made it, he climbed all the way up the stairs, yeah, and he's done it on his own as well and he's done it, um, there's been a couple of times where he sort of falls back a step or two, but ever since that, so this week he's been up the stairs on his own about... Oh my god it's well, every night feet. this week yeah so marwin yeah the marwin chapter as well this week wow. which is what was very well you know marwin didn't waste gentle. any time in the chapter this week well, so yeah it, was, like, it yeah. was the black i don't know i haven't got any black candles burning anywhere but you know <laughs> yeah the other announcement that i was making was that i'll also be at worldcon but i think i told you that already because we're that's the one in dublin, dublin isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and also yeah. we're going to the little Manchester one next year as Definitely well. Definitely going to Manchester. Which yeah. we we even said like we actually were more attracted to the the celebrity lineup in the Manchester one because yeah, they have more some really crew good and creators there. Yes, they've got um Sirio Farrell and the guy who plays the Night's King, I think, and they have tons of the artists that work on the show. The moments there, and mm -hmm. yeah, there's there's quite a few people that will be on the, you know, that will. I'm, I'm so excited about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Jen, and hi, Chrissy. So nice to see you guys. And um, so yeah, so Nashville for sure. So I'll be definitely uh, looking forward wow. to that. And um, so yeah, I also I was explaining that my voice is just coming back, so. Okay. Going in and out. I have hot whiskey to keep me company. Um, so yeah, this week we have a bit of a mammoth reading schedule. But yes. how did you get on with the six chapters? Um, yeah, there's again with all of the chapters in this reread, there are little things that I just completely forget. I'm like, oh my god, I didn't realize that. Oh, of course, yeah, but I can't. But the the, the there's certain things in that I didn't read the Sam chapter until today. And there's a few things at the end of that where I'm writing, you know, we have our questions to each other, but they're answered in the chapter. And I'm like, how did I forget that? How did I not? I, know, I got that. Yeah. I get all the time. <laughs> By the way, did you completely forget that the singer with Ed Muir was Tom Sevens in the last chapter, the last Jamie chapter? Well, I knew there was somebody from the Brotherhood Without Banners in the, in the encampment, but I thought it was Lem. Oh, no, it's yeah, it was Thomas Evans, but I, I completely forgot. Yeah, I, AU, AU, we're only getting started. AU, are yeah. you going to Nashville next year? Um, because I am, hopefully. 
I think I've said that enough now, Claire. Sorry. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> so I completely forgot it. I've co for co completely forgot about Tom Sevens. Totally yeah, there's a, there's a few things in it. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, I think, setting up for things. Maybe not so much in dance, but for wins. Definitely. Um, you know, there's Definitely. a lot of it. And, and especially there's a big push on that. Oh, but, you know, there's lots of not so much a cliffhanger, but yeah. a lot of setting up for, you know, what potentially could happen. So I've got loads of questions actually I was in the Sam chapter. I most surprised about the Jamie chapter. And I actually have shit tons on Jamie. Oh, okay. I have less on the other chapters than I do on Jamie. So um, will we get jumping in? We'll jump yeah. in, right? So um, this week we are reading from 40 to 45. We're discussing from 40 to 45, so the end of Feast. So that's the Princess in the Tower, the Ariane chapter, all the way to the Sam chapter. Next week is our first week of dance. We're jumping straight into dance. We'll have dance for two weeks, and then I'll take a break when I'm in Ireland because no internet connection there. Uh, the sheep don't go fast enough on the bikes for the internet. Um, so that'll be the next week. It'll be the prologue to Tyrion 2. So two Tyrion chapters next week, which if you missed them, we'll have we'll have lots there yeah. next week to talk about. So yeah, Ariane, um, I think I had less to talk about this than I was expecting. The Princess in the Tower. What were your initial thoughts on this one? I remember loving this chapter when I first read the, the series. I really liked the the fact that Dawn is different to the west of rest of Westeros, and that they, you know, there's if you there's more of a kind of feminism angle, and you know, I, I liked the way that the Dawnish chapters were written, and I do remember really enjoying this chapter. But I don't know whether it, it was just the you no know, the suspense of it at the beginning um not knowing is she is he really just going to keep her locked in this tower you know and the title of the chapter the princess in the tower but actually reading it this time i just thought ariane seems like a silly teenage girl who doesn't seem to be really that interested in i feel as though she had all the resources around her there in the tower she had all the books and and the maps and she just doesn't see them as interesting. She's like she'd she in a way a little bit like Sansa used to be that kind of girly sort of oh I wouldn't mind if it was a song or a a romantic story about such and such a thing. But the actual politics and the history is right there in the tower with her, and it's she's I mean she's grieving. She's grieving. I've got you know you've got to put things into context. She seems a lot more genuinely grieving for for oak heart than i expected it to be so um, I, she's, you know she's remorseful of that at least but she just kind of i, I I'm, I'm kind of beginning to I, i'm i'm beginning to understand why doran might have sidelined her a little bit in in his plans um, which that, came first her yeah. being like this rebellious quite immature 23 yeah. year old let's not forget she's mm. 23 um mm. or was, was she like that or did doran did doran react to that or did he mold that um it's kind of it seems know, to be because there is, this, question. there is this undercurrent as well that doran seems to keep like the people that he is close to he keeps them far away from him like his wife and he, he sent you know the the viper seemed to be off on his travels a lot and didn't you know they weren't they, they didn't seem to be in close proximity a lot of the time so he's quite he seems to uh, whether he deliberately is isolating himself and again that gives you the impression that oh you know he's the king of the castle and nobody can can rule dawn if it's not doran um but there's a there's there's, there's a lot of things i've got a couple of questions but i've also got more things of note i would say really in this chapter like there's there's a lot of stuff about the there are certain things in in across these five chapters actually where there are little bits of nuggets that are woven in and i and i'm guessing that from the the writer's perspective it's it's pushing those in before the end of this book to set up other things but you also get you know will there be some payoff for any of this that we're learning in these chapters there's quite a bit of stuff around the history of the different families within dawn and the and the factions and how you know things it sounds like 
things are just being held together by like spit and sawdust in a lot of places like Dawn Definitely. and in the Riverlands as well. You know, at any point things could just turn, uh, you know, and and everything is, is completely different. So, yeah, so there's, 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 a, yeah, there's a lot I, of that. I think I can see why people don't like Ariane from this chapter. And she just comes across as quite entitled, doesn't she? I mean, she's, oh, totally. she's, she, you know, she gets so depressed and takes to her bed because she's been locked up, and because mainly because she can't see her friends or she feels responsible for what's happening to her friends. But my God, I mean, I've put in my notes. I wouldn't mind a couple of weeks actually in that tower, just I chilling out. It. Yeah, it's like, like being on. Yeah, and you like you you like a baby. It's better than Butlins. And you've got like the most amazing books. Why don't you read the bloody exactly. books? Exactly, the view, and everything the is just like <laughs> incredible. The detail I completely <laughs> forgot that really pissed me off about Ariane. By the way, if the chat would like to let us know what they think of Ariane Martel, I'd be really interested. Mm -hmm. But the bit where she decides to dress in revealing sexy clothing so that when she finally meets her father, she'll be uncomfortable and he'll be uncomfortable too. Mm -hmm. And it's like, grow up. First yeah. of all, stop being so pissed off about Oberyn. Oberyn willingly went into a trial by combat yes. this is this this is really ridiculous also your dad is right to be pissed off with you you have a right to be pissed off with him but you stole a young girl and almost got her killed mm -hmm. and you got uh, a king's guard knight killed as well yes yeah. so it's going to be repercussions for dorn because of that so i feel like she doesn't know what she wants. She doesn't know yeah. what I mean. There's a part in the chapter where she's like, "I want, I want, I want," and she doesn't. She can't. She can't answer her own question. She doesn't really quite know what she wants apart from this ridiculous sibling rivalry with with Quentin. Which <clears throat> I mean, I, I, yeah, I am beginning to feel a little bit um, sympathetic towards Doran in a way when it comes to Ariane. I mean, you look at you know the choices that he's, he's got i suppose that he's got to be really careful because as it says in this chapter doran only plays a game that he can win so he's got to have strong components if he's in it for the long game and he's only playing a game that he can win i mean you know how different it was in the tv show that was just i think they just completely crucified that character really and actually is a pretty good actor as well he could have done he could have done justice yeah. to that part but um i think this is going to go on for quite a while in dawn because it is the long game um, i think um, yeah Meridi, or, sorry uh, elamore said when she was locked up to me it felt like it lasted forever i was upset with her it felt like mm. it lasted forever it actually doesn't last forever it's only a few weeks and i know like that's yeah, it's about, she's it's about imprisoned, a month. but she has committed yeah. treason yeah. and it's about a month yeah she has committed treason this chronologically this happens way way back in feast actually if you like mm. match it up it happens a while back uh so yeah well, it's just she, like doran like has just kind there. of gone over there calm the fuck down cool down and however long that takes and i will determine how long that will be just chill you, you know chill your jets and just dial it down yeah it, you know it's it's ridiculous but yeah I was just talking... that as well cool your jets yeah, but, uh, yeah. I, she i mean yes she's been locked up but as you said lap of luxury i wouldn't mind it he's also put quite a lot of information for her there that if she yes. could we just open the books and start reading she might find out something useful and she's, this to yeah. me is a big red flag as to her not being good at playing the game and yeah. I think it feels so different from her previous chapter, which was so action packed. Um, mm. And this is way more political and internal. And uh, so, yeah, but I. So let's yeah. just have a think about what's there, what's been left there, pr pretty strategically, I think, for her. She's, as you said, she's describing this, the, the tools that have been set there for it is dull. These books are dull, not interested in them at all, which is a real worry. Um, but what has actually been left there for are maps of Dawn, <clears throat> the laws of Dawn, which is really interesting when you think about the, the history and the factions and who legitimately should be ruling Dawn. 
Um, there's information there about or books about the about the religion about written by Septons and the, and he's left a copy of the Seven Pointed Star there for her. So geography, politics, religion, and magic. There are books in there about dragons as well. All of this stuff she needs to know because he's putting up door and I'm going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it does sound fantastic, but. All she can think about are her friends and what's happening with her friends. And I mean, you know, she's a Tyene is a BFF and it's like, oh, you're just eye rolling. But yeah. Um, I, I mean, you said you mentioned Sansa there earlier on. That's the difference with her and someone like Sansa. Sansa would have started reading the books. Yes. Probably yes. night yeah. one. Yeah. She would yeah. have started reading those books. Even yeah. Arya, who's quite impetuous, mm -hmm. probably would have started looking at the books eventually. Um, this, yeah, it's it's kind of, I don't want to be too hard on her because I do think Doran is to blame for some of this. It's certainly mm. that he kept her at arm's length when he could have probably even just bent the truth a little bit as to yeah. why he was offering her up such nasty men and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I, I want to go back to the description of Dane and um, I mentioned in the last, in the, in her last chapter, I believe um uh, dane god i completely forgot his name gerald mm. yeah dark star dark star yeah god almighty uh he i think he was trying to scar Mar marcella if it is marcella mm. i don't think he was trying to behead her because she says mm. a little she says that um she just managed to miss the beheading mm. that dane attempts I feel like somebody as uh, adept at at fighting as as Darkstar would be able to take off a kid's head with li or at least would go for a kill shot in a way more sophisticated way and with much more accuracy. I don't think I think that's what Ariane may have seen, but I don't think that's what he was going for. I think he was going for to scar her and to yeah. mark her so that that mix-up won't happen again between her and the other girl that was sent with her her cousin so that looks like her do you think it's this thing about I, I get the impression that he was allowed to escape yes in yes. that situation it's like you know how did he manage to get away how did he manage to escape because he was allowed to that can that you know but we've got to think about that as an option and also somebody told so, you know, Ariel Hotar keeps saying this, somebody told, somebody told, and she's got it going round and round and round in her head. It's torturing her. Who was it who betrayed me? One of her, like, lovely childhood friends or whatever. Which one betrayed? And she goes through them all, and it could only be Dark Star, which means, again, so what are the implications of that? If Dark Star is working with Doran, and they've got some kind of an alliance, a Dornish alliance between House Dane and um house martel in in doran's big you know he only plays if the game if he can win maybe part of him winning is having some sort of an alliance where because dark star is the dark but he's the black sheep of the dane family isn't he i don't think i think it's aries i think it's a combination of the two doran news dark star maybe but i think it's aries i think she answers her own question she right. actually says wait now i have it marked here to read out because i thought it was quite interesting it was too honorable he couldn't mm. deal with the consequences of it yeah she says uh, someone told could it have been sir aries had the white knight's guilt won out over his lust had he loved Marcella more than and more than her and betrayed his new princess to atone for his betrayal of the old? Now, there's a couple of ways of reading that. Mm. The new princess might be the replacement for Marcella. Yeah. And the old referring to Marcella herself, or it could be Ariane and Marcella. Um, was he so, so ashamed of what he'd done that he threw away his he threw his life away at the green blood rather than live to face this, the dishonor? So I think there's a couple of ways of reading that. She's either subconsciously arrived at the right conclusion herself um, or she knows that maybe there was a switch or maybe this is George's way of alerting us to a switch. I definitely think there was a swap. Mm -hmm. I don't think 
that the girl that was harmed was Marcella. Um, so yeah, I think there's a couple of ways. I I think I think it it could very well be Aries because he, it would yeah. make sense that he kills himself to not have to face her with that truth as well. I'm just laughing that there are certain things that Preston Jacob says that you just dismiss, and then there are other things that you completely it just get it borrows in there, and it's yeah. yeah and, but it, that is uh, that is one of those kind of plausible possibilities that there is another princess, and that there's been a swap, and she's had to she's gone into hiding, and this happens a lot with princes and princesses. Don't you know? Let's let's not ignore the fact that this sort of thing happens an awful lot. So that could be a possibility, but I, I, I mean, mean, I don't. It, even if there isn't a swap, I think that's the that that may be that it might be a cover up, um, in that Doran wants either it's Marcella or a replacement Marcella, whoever it is, he wants that girl marked so that they can't be swapped again. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, a swap makes more sense to me. Or just you know do. <laughs> make a statement but not necessarily kill her i mean the, the, there, are, there are several options here I'm, and I, I hadn't thought of this before about um possibly doran has promised dark star something that will give him you know maybe dark stars burning and but you know his heart's desire is to be the sword of the morning and to you know he wants to kind of be an important component of house dane yeah. and um you know the, the martels being the 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 wardens of dawn or whatever or the leaders in that area maybe there's some sort of alliance being formed there but it could be a mixture of both it could be both the weak links really in terms of whether ariane's plan was going to work or not was always going to be okar and this other unknown component of dark star so there's yeah uh, it's, i don't know <laughs> either or or possibly both yeah um the other thing that i wanted to point out was that at the end of the chapter sorry there's also a spider on my desk jumping around the place driving me mad um there he he points out at the end when he tells her about the series the marriage alliance with the series mm. and the fact that they want vengeance and fire and blood and all that kind of thing it's it's as if he's giving her just enough to keep her maybe in line it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like she's getting the whole story and he when he you know presses on her that it's fire and blood that he's after he whispers as if he's afraid someone's listening mm -hmm. and it made me wonder are there other people listening i mean how small is this circle that doran is working within is this yeah. all in his head? Is there anyone helping him out? Um, yeah. So um, there's lots of stuff going on in the chat. Laura loves the clock in your background. In your background. Um, Connie says, <laughs> Ned spirits away John. Varys spirits away Aegon. Gendry. Ariane tries to take Marcella. Baelish spirits, spirits away Sansa. Yoren, Arya. Who do you think spirited? Who do you think spirited away Tyrick Lannister in the chaos? I think we talked about yeah. that a couple of weeks yeah. ago, and I think we agreed Varys probably right. Mm -hmm. um, there is an awful uh, theory out there that it's Littlefinger and that he gave him to Corbray. Um, but yeah, uh, Meridian doesn't think it was Darkstar; she thinks it was Drey. And mm -hmm. Connie is saying Tyrion or maybe Baelish took away. Tyrek for his Lannister claim, like Sansa taking away unconsummated marriage to baby. Um, mm. and yeah, and AU, I'll definitely remember the pepper up mint oil thing, but I don't mind spiders, um, and Ivan doesn't allow us to get rid of them. We like spiders. Uh. There you go. We're, we're one of those people. We're, we're that kind of family. Um, so was there anything <laughs> else with the princess in the tower? Uh, Hoster wanting to marry Edmure to Ariane. Yeah. Uh, that's quite interesting. <laughs> so they all have, uh, he seemed to want to fortify the Riverlands' power through marriage in every single, you know, each of the Seven Kingdoms. Um, and Doran had to, uh, you, you know, that was never going to be 
that, that, that was never part of Doran's plan. So obviously that wasn't going to work out. But interesting to know that that's what Hoster wanted for Edmure. So <coughs> is Doran the last of that old brigade kind of left, apart from maybe Manderley? Um, and maybe, but the maybe the main kind of houses he is, right? Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I guess Tyrell, but Tyrell that, that, that same generation. Yeah. yeah, Tyrell as well, and yeah. Tarly possibly, but that you know they may not have been big players yeah, in any kind yeah. of like Illuminati or any sort of you know power group yeah. that were hoping hoping to topple the Targaryens, and also. He, I mean, the others wanted to get rid of the Targaryens and bolster their power base, but it looks like Doran doesn't, didn't, you know, it, the opposite. He he wants to be able to um, ally with the Targaryens so that Dawn in the future can be, you know, can be safe. Yeah. Um, again, it's all through marriage. Marriage alliances are such a strong weapon. Mm -hmm. um, uh, anything else that I've got here? Um, uh no no not really the oh well where is dark star well he's just escaped hasn't he but so again do you have any theories as to where, to where i don't know for what benefit he was allowed to escape but to me it sounds like he was allowed to escape so if that's the case and somebody's helping him he could be you know he could be playing savassi with doran for all we know it's you know it, it, it occurred that. to me uh complete tinfoil <laughs> it occurred to me that if dane and uh doran are working together he doran may know about the tower of joy he may know about mm -hmm. john mm -hmm. and maybe his plan isn't for Ariane and aegon now maybe it is maybe that's what he'll tell Ariane. no one shall ruin it Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah maybe it's Ariane and john yeah maybe I, 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 and, and i wouldn't blame him no i wouldn't blame him for not keep telling her the whole truth also the starks i mean there are a number of eligible women about but maybe not as many as you think because they're all getting married off left right and center we see that with the elaine chapter people are trying to marry off people as quickly as possible before winter comes mm -hmm. and limits movement and all that kind of thing but if there's potential there for Ariane to get to John or John to get to Ariane, you know, maybe that's something that Doran is thinking of. It's complete tinfoil. Mm. I've absolutely no evidence for it. But anything is kind of possible with Doran and Dorn. And I don't know where this story goes. I don't know how it plays out, how important Doran will be in the end. It's got to be important, but it's hard. I'm, at the end yeah. of Feast, I'm still confused, to be honest. Yeah, yeah me too. Maybe the Quinton chapters will help a little bit um but yeah. yeah dark star according to meridian maybe has gone back to his seat in dawn um, <coughs> at starfall yeah mm. potentially um and yes yeah, so uh okay let's get on to the longest chapter in the song of ice and fire yes Today, this went on forever can i just say this chapter was in need of editing yes I, it's lovely there's lovely word of building. It's very nice to be in Sansa's head for a while. Great. She's she's very convincing in her role as Elaine, but she's still Sansa deep down. Not like Arya, where Arya is definitely Arya. Or Dar Arya is definitely the character she's playing for most of the time. I feel like Sansa isn't quite fully Elaine for me. Well, just to... This is the descent from the Eyrie. This is the chapter that where they descend from the Eyrie. And you've got them leaving, preparing to leave, leaving, and then the entire journey. And the ascent to the Eerie that we've had from other point of view characters, like Kat, for example, it does, you, you can't do that in one chapter. You've got to split it up over a couple of chapters. It just went to the point where I actually had to listen, to, because I'm listening to the audio version, I had to listen to it a couple of times because I was just, I, was, really? I wasn't paying attention, I was kind of oh. drifting off. But it's like over an hour, is it, on the audio? It's 69 minutes on the audio, wow. and usually the chapters are around 40 minutes. It like, you know, Ooh, they, some of them can be like 30 fast. something, so double the size of, of a normal chapter, so it was heavy. It no, was very I heavy. 
through it and I was like, oh God, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be long. Um, yeah. Hi, Lauren. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, oh, sorry, Meridian. Thank you for correcting me. Um, he's not in Starfall because he'll be from a cadet branch. That is um, mm -hmm. Geraldine, of course. Um, uh, Connie said, oh my God, I wanted to jump out the moon door. Yeah, yeah that would have yeah. been quicker. Bungee jump from the veil. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? It did make me realise this chapter that the Arons are actually where they are in the Eerie. It, it, they, they, it's actually quite vulnerable, isn't it? You can't stay there throughout the winter. It's it's in it, it may be impregnable, but it's also it, inaccessible. So you've got no food. No, I mean there's a real like creepy cold uninviting atmosphere there anyway and there has been for the last few chapters but it's just that like come on get go just go just get out and sweet robin doesn't want to stay and he's dragging his heels but it just makes you realize how the Arons really do need help from the lords yeah. in the veil you know they're really reliant on there's this again this delicate balance of we are in power but oh my god do we rely on you to keep us in power in it, it just geographically the way it's situated i, I um, just want to say there ben hi i never said hello to you earlier on he says i actually dig this chapter because the last one in dawn made me want to rip my ears off <laughs> <laughs> ariane can't be divisive i will say yeah. there are i do definitely prefer being in the veil um, mm. And I think you're right, they are so vulnerable. It makes me wonder, he spends so much time describing this more than more than a lot of places, to be fair. And mm -hmm. um, Winterfell, Red Keep and Vale, probably, right? Top three, maybe, that we get yeah. the most in-depth descriptions of? Winterfell, we get quite a bit of yeah. a description of Winterfell, but it's it's a fantastic chapter. I love it. I love this chapter and I love the, I love the, the detail of all of the, you know, how Harry the heir is Harry the heir, yes. and who is the heir to? That is the heir to Robert, not um, not the Wayne. You know the Waynewood heir. But it's a lot for the it's end just of the heavy. Book. Yeah, it's heavy right there exactly at the end of the book. It yeah. could have been. It, you know, we could have had the preparing to leave in a shorter chapter, a little bit earlier, I think. But it's, I was I was kind of zoning out through the gossip. Yeah. Yeah, because I was, I yeah. kind of got lost in the description of the setting, which is beautiful. Mm. And she, the way she, I mean, the way Sansa describes snow and ice, it reminds me of John. They have a real love of winter, the two of them. Mm. Like she'll never not be a Stark. Yeah, just the way yeah. George describes winter through Sansa and John's eyes is just magical. And I love that. But it made me zone out through the gossiping. I was like, I can't keep up. Who, who's that character? Yeah. I can't remember who you are, and I was furiously on the app at the same time, going, "All oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Who now? And oh god, so it kind of it, that's I I agree. I would have liked to see this chapter split in two, but it, that's a minor thing, I guess. Um, I, I I let's start with Sweet Robin. Um, Sweet Robert. Uh, yeah, he is. Um there's a danger that he'll die in his sleep, right? This is mm. very true of sleep, sleeping tablets in our own world. They can build up in your system and just kill you one night if you take them, yeah. if you are over-reliant on them. So sweet sleep could do the same to him. And it made me wonder, right, think this now. I just, I just, just dawned on me this afternoon. I was like, I wonder if this be a thing. So we kind of agree that he has some sort of, there's something going on with him telepathically with sweet Robert there's some somebody's interfering from somewhere with him or he has some sort of green seeing abilities or something my idea is if sweet sleep kills him could we end this series with a comatose sweet Robert so a, co a comatose young boy we began the series with Bran falling and ending up in a coma could we end up with a comatose Robert Aaron to the point where he's in this kind of endless sleep, dreaming forever. The name of the last book is A Dream for Spring. I wondered, will one of the bittersweet things not be that Littlefinger gets to kill him, but that the veil ends up being ruled by a comatose young boy? 
and I don't know something about it maybe made me think that I don't know if he's going to die this kid I think he's just going to end up because that's kind of all he wants to do right is be in bed right now well this this he's also at the complete mercy of the Meister and directions that the Meister is being given by Littlefinger and he's he's an absolute pain in the ass Robert but he's also absolutely terrified the big right the beginning of this chapter is really concerned about are you on your own is anyone with you are you on your own and it's like what are they doing to you is it just overdoses of poison basically or you know again that's that that the kind of long game oh he was a sickly child he, he didn't pass he didn't get past puberty blah 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 whatever no one's going to be surprised at that but i don't know what meister coleman is doing to him to make him so scared that are you on your own are you on your own is anyone with you oh right okay come and come and comfort me and it's like what's happening to that little boy why does he always want to run around and find somebody to help and everyone's like oh just give him some more just just you know put, put him back in bed and and it's like this is really like i don't know there's some kind of abuse going on here that uh, on top of the you know poisoning him with, with the with the view to eventually him sort of overdosing or never waking up i mean it's a balancing act isn't it how much they're giving him so, to, to one way and it's like that's it he's not going to wake up there's i can't remember is it munchausen's when somebody like uh feeds like a, an illness that isn't there like that, I feel yeah. like that was, is that what it's called? I can't yeah, remember the name. Munchausen's is when you create an illness that you convince other people that you've got. Munchausen's by proxy oh, is yeah. when you do that to somebody else. So you get, you know, there are, uh, you create an illness for somebody else. A That's child what I feel like Lysa did. A little bit. And it yeah. could have been prompted by Littlefinger. Because mm. uh, certainly he's a lot weaker <clears> than he should be. Uh, Connie says that the Weirwood throne keeps messing him up and Laura is going over to LML's channel. I know we constantly chat, we all, we, we constantly clash with him, but I completely understand. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Connie says, Hoster Tully was at the mercy of the maesters, so did Lysa not want too much medicine for Robert because she knew what was going on with her father? Potentially, mm -hmm. um, there's something definitely... I mean, there's something definitely strange about the way Lysa kept breastfeeding him as well. That's yeah. not normal. Um, not for this kind of, not for a similar time period in our own time. Definitely a highborn lady. And that's been mentioned before in the books. A highborn lady would normally nurse their own child and certainly mm. not for that long. Mm. Um, so, there, so maybe she thought that she was maybe remedying whatever ailment he had. Maybe mm -hmm. he does have a sickness. Maybe he is... They do think he's mentally ill, but I think it's something more. And yeah. I don't necessarily yeah. think it's just the weirwood throne messing him up. Although he could be one of the kids that potentially Blood Raven sent out feelers, mind feelers, to try and see who would respond the best. Um, this, uh, this, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just going to throw in here before we forget that this is the chapter, as long as it is, but this is the chapter where Sansa, quote, remembers a kiss with Sandor with the hound that never happened yeah it never happened yeah but she she's was... invented this memory in her, in her mind and also she doesn't only mention it once she kind of thinks about it twice a little bit later on in the chapter she thinks about it as well but in the context of oh, you know men will take advantage of you and then just leave you and you know they they're not heroic and they, you know, they each, she's thinking about other men that have let her down before in her life and she kind of lumps him into that. But it does feel like she's also, she's kind of describing him as a guy that wanted something from her. She kind of gave it up a little bit and then off he goes into uh, never to be seen again, you know, typical. It, that it, That's the way she seems to be thinking about it. And it's like, it never happened that in fact, the, this kiss, that you're remembering so graphically or you know it, it, it just it just it wasn't it, where's that come from and like the hound even said it never happened yeah uh, it does 
point out something very important in the books that memory it can be very misleading from POVs and and this is true yeah. of Ned when yeah. Tower of Joy people treat Tower of Joy as gospel mm. because it came from Ned it came from Ned in a fever dream when we get yeah. into Brienne we'll see how in how inaccurate fever dreams can be yeah. um and look at Cersei with her prophecy how much yeah. of the prophecy has she remembered accurately I'll mm. talk a little bit more about that in Jamie 7 as well but it, it's it's so it's it's like as if as well that she's trying to keep up with Randa and Maya and trying to be a normal girl who actually had a normal life and maybe had a few dalliances that she shouldn't have had. Yeah. Because they've all do, they've done that and she hasn't had a chance to do that yet. Mm. The only kisses she's had are from Littlefinger and that's creepy. Yeah. Really yeah. creepy. Yeah. She hasn't even had a kiss from her husband. Mm. So uh, yeah, I I. Yeah, the gossiping with Randa, I tried to keep up with. Um, but I felt like this, it was kind of well-placed for Elaine slash Sansa coming down from the veil because it, feel, it feels a bit like Littlefinger gathering secrets from, from brothels, which we'll get in the Brienne mm. chapter as well, but this time Lady Stoneheart doing that. Um, and I feel like this is where Sansa's strength will lie. Littlefinger will... Like Littlefinger is, you feel like Littlefinger has sent women up to bring her down. Well, do you think that he would have sent Randa, or do you think this is a she's just muscled her way in on her own? Because he he's he's warned Sansa previously. Just be this Miranda Royce, be careful of her. You know, watch what yeah. she says. Be careful. Again, is that has he planted her there? The same with like the Corbray situation. I, I wonder, does he underestimate? women's ability to build relationships and gossip um they, these two are gonna be, it, it seems like they're going to be firm friends doesn't it has, has he yeah. anticipated that and is that no. what he wants is she there as a plan i think it seems like miranda's there of her own volition and she's you know i aspire to be wicked and she's she you know she's she's a she's an interesting character because um, if you look yeah. at the examples that he's had of female relationships, like Kat and Lysa didn't have a great relationship. Mm. Lysa didn't surround herself with women. Cersei hasn't surrounded herself hasn't surrounded herself with trustworthy women. So it feels like he hasn't seen how deep the relationships can go between. Yeah, I think women. you're probably right. He will have seen a lot of, you know, the, even the women in the brothels. It's that you know they're paid to it's it's all fake you know it's not kind of genuine i suppose with the clients whether or not they, they were friendly with each other like genuinely you know camaraderie with the whores in king's landing i don't know whether he will have seen anything like that but yeah it just do, do, do the other question that i've got about the girls um as they're coming down with maya do you think that like, does everybody know that Maya is a royal bastard? I couldn't. I couldn't make this out. I couldn't. Mm. I couldn't fully. Um, Maya knows, right? Does Maya know? Because I couldn't remember if she knew or not. Because she had a memory of a of a man throwing her up in the air or something. Yeah. Like, is that Robert? Well, yeah. Dark hair, blue yeah. eyes. She always felt safe in his arms. Blah blah blah. So, I, I, but I don't i don't know what did, if anyone in the comments if you you know is that is it is it is it well known by everybody or is it just just is it just that maya knows or, I can't know. or does got nobody to know it, right? yeah yeah i mean I it wouldn't know. be that much of a leap would it she's around this right age i mean i think it probably is you know fairly well known but which made me think about robert's bastards generally in terms of like the Blackfires and the Targaryens, wouldn't Robert's bastards, numerous as they are, but certainly the kind of famous ones that we know in the books, Maya Stone, Edric Storm, couldn't there be some potential for kind of like a almost like a Blackfires rebe rebellion version of Robert's bastards versus the Lannisters in terms of like legitimacy for the throne um, 
Battle of the Bastards. Well, yeah, that I would have yeah. thought that there, and she's quite exposed, like literally, really exposed. She could fall off this this cliff at face at any time, and she almost does. Um, but I would have thought that Robert's bastard Gendry, obviously. So the three, the, those three characters, I would have thought could destabilize somebody's plans and could maybe even just potentially sort of rally together somehow as Robert's bastards who are like the, you know, who are, the argument would be that they are more legitimate than, um, you know, Tommen and Joffrey and Marcella who clearly are not, I don't know, it just, it just made me think that Robert's bastards potentially have the potential to rock the boat of, in in politics and should they be hiding themselves? Should be the should they be kind of you know they just kind of remind me of Blackfires a little bit. I see parallels there. Yeah, Connie and Meridian said everybody knows. Uh, the Royces know for sure. Connie says and Kat saw the resemblance right away. Yeah, John Aaron said mm. the scene was strong and he probably would have known that from Maya, mm. I guess. Mm. Uh, so is Maya the oldest bastard? Yeah, I think be, so. Right? Yeah, yeah because it would have been. Gendry before it so while he was still john aaron's ward so he would have been quite your 14 15. so uh sansa also thinks about wanting to see john again see her half brother again and uh yeah yeah we got all of that stuff about because she's and, feeling uh, bastard brave in this chapter yeah sansa sansa and her bastard bravery yeah um so, so, so she's starting to see bastards in a different light now isn't she yeah so Littlefinger complains that Cersei has vexed things up in King's Landing and mm. it isn't giving him enough time to plant the seeds he wanted to plant mm. I'm reading that as though he wanted to impregnate Sansa right he wants to take out mm. Harry the Air at some point then marry Sansa and impregnate Sansa so that that he's gonna have yeah. to try and speed that up or skip that step or do something that he's not going to get to yeah. plant there's other seeds i mean we get this in jamie later on the, there's yeah. not going to be other harvests winter is coming way too fast mm -hmm. so there may actually be actual seeds there may be other was there is there are, are there any other plots or schemes you think that uh, get on? jane westerling has 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 did uh did rob stark plant a seed and if you know, and the fact that he, he uh, yeah, I've got quite a bit to say actually later on about Jamie's yeah. state of mind. Jamie's um, chapter is my chapter of the week. Yeah, I think yeah. he's Sam. <laughs> <laughs> but he, uh, you know, d down to the the minutia in terms of planning of yeah, you will do this, and then you'll you'll marry this, you know, you'll marry someone uh, that you can't. That this will be in a time period of like two years so that nobody is able to question whether or not a new husband didn't plant a baby in your belly and it could potentially be the you know rob stark's child so it, it the, the, the planning that goes that went into that but yeah the seed being planted i think definitely has something to do with sansa being pregnant oh Sorry, I put a strepsil in my mouth. Meridian is going to tend her animals. So thanks, Meridian. Oh, bye, Meridian. Um, yeah, uh, uh, interestingly, like Sansa thinks of Littlefinger as a father. Right? Yeah, she, she seems to agree with Littlefinger quite a bit, especially with things like, oh, I don't know, like with the with, uh, sweet, sweet Robin being contained and like managed you know his this condition being managed it is it, it, i don't know this it, there's part of this chapter where i just think wow sansa and littlefinger are a little bit like two peas in a pod here the way they're thinking about things she doesn't seem too alarmed at littlefinger's certainty that robert is going to die which yeah, I'd, I'd expect yeah. a bit more alarm about that certainty yeah, she um, yeah, she didn't seem that bothered about it at all, did she? It yeah, seems as I... if she will use any kind of methods she gets she gains by 
being this bastard girl for a while, having the mm. ability to gossip with all sorts of people, not just highborn, but other bastards or maybe servants or whatever. I think a lot more people will talk to her. I think Littlefinger probably knows that that might be one of the risks of her being identified as a bastard. Mm. So he'll need to speed up the process of unveiling mm. her as Sansa, obviously. But I think she'll use, that's what will be his downfall, her ability to get information um, and her ability to retain information. It's very mm. important too. Like, I wonder, should the mace have said so it who, about the sweet sleep? <laughs> I've got a couple of questions. Um, uh, do you, do, Littlefinger mentions three queens, like, fight a battle you know like the, the the war of the five kings this is going to be the war of the three queens so cersei marjorie who who is he think who's the third queen is he that could be danny could be queen you know crowning sansa as like queen of the north or he, he's got think, it's not olena queen of thorns no and that what maybe maybe but that's what he's thinking is his next move, isn't it? When everything's in place for him, that's going to be the next thing. He's anticipating this battle of the three queens. Um, I don't know, maybe he's thinking that Marjorie will be dead by then or Cersei will be dead or by then. He'll, but... he'll crown Sansa by then. Yeah, yeah. Um, he wouldn't know about yeah. who. Could he know about Lady Stoneheart? Would he be aware no. of that? No, 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 no. I don't. I, I mean, he might have heard, you know, the 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 the, the gossip about it, but it's been referenced. Certainly, it's been mentioned a couple of times in Jamie's chapter. But Ben says um, um, Marcella yeah. being maybe being queened in Dorne, hoping the snakes pull off their plan. Yeah, that would help. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. For sure. So there's all sorts of things here. There's, uh, you know. <laughs> Lady Waynewood obviously in cahoots with Littlefinger, so he's got his little like subplots like the Corbray one, and he's now got the Waynewood one. Um, he he paid her debt off, and that's when she decided to tip up and let you know agree that Harry the heir could marry Sansa to somehow unite the North and the Vale. Um, Harry the heir is the young falcon, and there's some I don't know again this magical stuff about right at the beginning of the chapter. Robert is always asking for stories of the Winged Knight and Sansa's like, oh, I'll, I'll read you two chapters when we get here. And when, you know, she uses it as like a carrot on a stick to get him to do things that she'll read him some of the, the stories about the Winged Knight. So this was about um, Artis Aaron who drove the first men out of the Vale and then flew to the top of the tower on a huge falcon. And I've just put in my notes in brackets, really? So, you, you know, how could, at some point in terms of storytelling in history, are we really expected to swallow that somebody's mistaken a dragon as a falcon or did magical, massive, huge, monstrous falcons, these winged animals really exist? And they I just think it's... Our own world. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, like that flu. Like, yeah, pterodactyl kind of. Well, yeah, even yeah, like, like even wing like birds. Yeah, you know, they, yeah, they, they yeah, were yeah. massive birds. But um, um, and that he's called the young falcon. Really, in his own mind, Robert wants to be the young falcon, doesn't he? Because he always wants to hear, hear the story about the glory and all that. But that's it's just not going to happen. Here's the re real young falcon being introduced at the but actually he's not because uh, i i imagined him to be quite young a boy like the heir to whatever he's not he seems like he's he's got a bastard daughter already in fact i think he's got a few children um so he's he's quite older i think don't we get to meet him in the one of the i think so yeah one of the le not the, the pre-release chapters but i can't i can't remember I thinking about the winds chapters you know i it must be nearly two years since I read any mm. of the Winds chapters. The last one was the, the Forsaken chapter. 
Yeah, and that wasn't this year. That was last year, wasn't it? I'm definitely up for doing streams yeah. on the wins chapters because I yeah. Yeah. completely gone out of my head. I think we have the eight or nine first chapters. If they are the first Yeah, chapters. yeah, yeah. We've got like half the book. Half <laughs> a yeah, quarter of the book. Um, I Interesting to know that John Aaron was married three times. Yeah, this is where I got confused. Oh, yeah. stress, I'll just down my throat. <laughs> <laughs> kind of right, <laughs> take a drink. Um, but yeah, this is where I was confused because remember I thought way back in Clash or something when we talked about this that John Aaron had only married Lysa, but the chat mm. had reminded me that. And I went and looked it up and he had married two other women but didn't have any children. Yeah, so there's all these like half brothers and sisters, half nephews, different branches of House Aaron. Same as there are different branches of House Dane, like Dark Star, and then there's the Cast Dark. So, do, you know, I, I don't know. There's just seems to be, and, and then you've got Royal Bastards. There's always those threats to, to lineage and, uh, you know, securing the, the your your house name. And your, so I, I can kind of see where Tywin was coming from with his obsession about the image of of House Lannister and how it should be the thing that continues generations after they've been buried, you know, the house, the, the, the name Lannister like the should star. still. But there's lots of threats, lots of threats everywhere, um, you know, diff half half brothers and sisters and bastards and just, well, yeah, it's the, the interesting. Thing, um, I don't think we've seen the last of the veil. Uh, no. I, I feel like it's easy to believe that we have because it's winter and we can't go back up there. You can if you've got a dragon, mm. but also someone could hide up there over the winter. I know the yeah. winter is terrible. Mm -hmm. but it would be interesting to see if somebody could hide up there. Mm. I know there are theories that the blackfish might hide there uh, because he was. Well, you, we've got to remember as well that winter isn't just like two and two and two to three months or whatever. No, it, it, this can be years, years. Yeah. So. So it depends on how much of winter we get. I, I wonder is that one of the reasons George is struggling with the end because mm. how do we dream of spring? How quickly does he have to end winter? Um. Yeah. Connie reminds us that John's seed was not strong. I mean, I've posited before that there potentially, I mean, there's lots of kind of rumors that potentially the Blackfish is gay. He did insist mm. on going with Lysa. Maybe John Aaron was gay. Maybe it's not a seed. Mm. Maybe mm. it's a genuine. I mean, I, I'm not sure. I think a couple of, uh, one of his wives, maybe both of them were still, had stillborn kids or miscarriages or something. Mm. But, you know, um, it's something to ponder. Uh, yeah, so that's it for the Elaine chapter for me. Do you have anything else? No, just again, lots of questions about what might happen next. And uh, maybe we can reveal some of that if we're looking into the um, the release chapters. Yeah. But, you know, is, is Sansa going to stay there for her? And how does she marry Harry the Air? If she does... Is that likely to happen before Sweet Robin dies or after? You know, what would... It, well, uh, I mean, something that I completely forgot, actually, in this chapter, um, the marriage to Tyrion is still... It st still holds. Tyrion yes. has to die, so... Yeah, yeah. I can't remember if something happened in the Winds chapters where they annulled it. I don't remember that being a thing. I know that happened in the show. I feel like we've had this conversation. Yeah, um, I think that we that we, you pretty much married, you legitimately married, the minute that you married. You, it doesn't have to be consummated. I, d I don't think. Although you can appeal for it to be. Uh, oh yeah, the annulment. But they can't thing annul it there. without revealing who she is. Yeah. So, I mean, has Littlefinger sent somebody after Tyrion? There's he, he, the lofty, bold ambitions that Littlefinger's got because if he is ultimately wanting Sansa to basically hand him or be in control of Sansa and she is in control of the Vale and, and the North and he's also got um, Harrenhal, that's a huge geographical area 
a, 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 in terms of a power base. But I think he's after more than that, even more than that. Um, but he would have to, Tyrion needs to, for his next step in a much bigger plan, I'm sure, Tyrion has to go, Sweet Robin has to go, and also Sansa has to say, yes, I agree to your plans. It, yeah, she seems to be very kind there's of on... There's a lot of plate spinning. There's, yeah, a lot of plate spinning, but also we, we're we given the impression as readers in this chapter that Sansa is kind of going along with Littlefinger about the, you know, this question of what to do with Sweet Robin. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was Elaine. That's so we'll it. go back to probably the there's two Elaine chapters, I believe, from Wynne's release. Mm -hmm. Or is it two Ariane chapters? Maybe it's two of each of them. But um we'll come back to them. We'll come back to them. Uh so <laughs> the ultimate Brienne Eight Stoneheart chapter. Uh, yeah. this is a great chapter. It's where a lot of things from the previous Jamie chapter kind of there's a payoff for a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. It begins with a fever dream, and it's very different to Jamie's dream later on, which isn't really a dream at all. Um, so, yeah, where would you like to start with Brienne? Well, following on from the brutal fight with Biter at the end of the crossroads, she's captured by the Brotherhood Without Banners. So this is them marching her to basically to see Lady Stoneheart. Um, and the, I mean, the dream is very trippy. It's very weird, and she's—it's all about people. I, I don't, I don't. As much as I like, as much as I love Brienne, she's one of my favourite characters. The this reread has just confirmed to me, and I've now got to the point where I accepted. She's a bit of a thick. She's not going to make it to the end. <laughs> and I used to be adamant that was, no, 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 Brienne will definitely be there at the end. She's going to survive. She's going to be the one that's the one true knight. And at every she time now, she's dreaming a lot of dead people, which I think is, you know, just all this, this kind of spirits of the slain, um, which I just think is massive foreshadowing for, for not being around. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, to be honest with you, I really haven't got much on this chapter. I don't but a couple of questions chapter. about Stoneheart. But right at the very end, um, I think that the decision that she's given, choose the sword or the, and choose the sword and kill the Kingslayer or the noose. Yeah. Um, and I think George has confirmed, hasn't yeah, he, it's he has. years and years ago that she, she, that she shouted a word and the word was sword. So we know that she chooses the sword, which means that I think the real decision that she made right at the end wasn't between the sword and the and the noose. It was between Pod and Jamie. Yes, I think that's and fair. What yeah. she's decided to do is save Pod. It's interesting will, that yeah. her and Jamie are with a pain. Mm, mm. That's, that's an interesting. That's, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I just want, there's, there's a couple of things at the beginning when she meets Stoneheart, it's amazing. It's so fantasy, mm. fantastical, yes. that whole yeah. thing. Um, Lem is, is using the Hound's Helm. And I mm. wonder, will there be any, um, is there an implication for that? Could there be an Arya payoff with him maybe wearing the helm and Arya kills him or somebody kills him thinking that he's the Hound? Or yeah, it's, it's, to be the hound it's, to get it's, something. this helm has been passed around like a curse, hasn't it? A few people have worn it. Um, it's and not a good thing to be wearing. No, it's not. I don't think you're going to last a very long wearing that. Uh, you're asking for trouble, let me put it that way. You're asking I, feel for like, trouble. I feel like if he does wear it, it'll be some sort of sacrificial thing. So if he is yeah. Rhaegar's old squire, mm. or if he, and he, who was also a friend of. Robert, I think, and he's been tormented by the division there. I think it's be it's if he uses it, the Brotherhood Without Banners are not the band of chaotic outlaws they'd have you believe. There's a lot more yeah. structure to this organization than you think. And I yeah. feel like if he's using the Hound's Helm, it isn't in the same way 
that the other guys who was using the hound's helm roar biter. or biter biter, yeah, biter. Um, it isn't the same it, it isn't in the same way so i mean like i full credit to davos fingers who alerted me to the fact that um well i knew that the the, the prostitute had the crown that lady stoneheart had but i didn't put the connection together that they're basically using a network of prostitute spies to spy on to spy on the Frey and Lannisters and potentially other Riverlands houses oh. in the area. Okay. And that, so the last time we saw Rob's crown, I mentioned it before with the phrase, the Frey that um crowned the Queen of Whores. I remember Jamie, yes. like they were guarding Edmund. Oh, uh, Ryman Frey. Yes, and she was wearing Rob's crown, and now the crown is with Lady Stoneheart, yeah. which means that that's how they get information. And we also learn in JB's chapter that a couple of Freys have been killed and hung at a market town close yes. by, which yeah. actually predates this chapter then, I think. Yeah, yeah. The Jamie chapter predates this chapter. It also... Uh, it also show it also shows something else that Kat has learned from her mistakes. She learned this trick from Littlefinger. Mm. Use the people that that people least expect or underestimate. The people yeah. who are invisible. Yeah. Don't be, you can't walk in there as the lady and think everybody's gonna listen because you're Lady Stark or you're Hoster Tully's daughter. That but, never worked for her. Is she making these decisions, do you think? I, I mean, think is I she think she's making a lot of them? <clears throat> I don't know whether she's just some sort of symbolic figurehead for revenge and that actually she's, you know, the fact that Beric Dondarrion um, gave his flame of life to her. I don't so think they were tonight. as organised before she came along. I don't think they were, they had lost purpose. I feel like they were a band of Robin Hood men that were about to break apart mm. and they found their purpose through Catelyn. That's what I think. I think when Beric gave her the seal, because remember, Taurus didn't want this to happen. So it doesn't sound like Taurus is pushing this agenda. It feels very much like a Lady Stoneheart. Now, maybe Harwin is in there mixing it up and Lem and people like that. But it feels like she has a lot of, she's planning a lot of this. That there's a Frey genocide happening. And they're happy, a Frey Lannister genocide. But it seems to be the Freys are getting the worst of it. Um, I well, don't, more just, just, just the way I'm reading it this time, honestly, I'm asking lots of questions about things that I probably would have just taken for granted or assumed before. Why did Beric decide to give his life up for I, Lady Stoneheart? I don't Stoneheart? think he had much of a life, though. Well, that's it. Is it a case of, like, I don't know who I am anymore, I don't know what's going on, I'm just going to, you know, oh, my God, it's Lady Stark, I, I'm, I'm going to see if this works. It might not, but I'm prepared to give it a go. Or because all of this, the decision for, to, for him to do that, was it his decision? I don't know. But the decision for him to do that would have been way before anything like her, you know, showing well she was dead so she couldn't she couldn't sort of be resurrected and say right here are my plans this is what i need you all to do i'm going to lead this group and we're going to do with you know the, the uh, vengeance is what i'm all about so we're going to do this i mean they seem to understand what she's saying and she can, i mean she can she can speak which is something that i'd forgotten i thought she just had this like ah, like rattly noise and that there wasn't really much sense coming from her but actually she is speaking and giving commands she says hang them um and brienne can hear that quite clearly so there is some she can remember sense in consciousness she can remember a lot more of her life than barry could by the time he gave life to her mm. like barry was on what his ninth death or something yeah um, but she was also she'd been there for three days and it, uh, but, but it was it was nymeria that dragged her out of the the river so was that does that add to, does that give her some extra st strength in terms of sort of i don't know being fueled by some form of magic that's that's stronger i mean to me just you know being in that state being dead and rotting in the river bloated and everything and being then being dragged out of the river it that that's like you wouldn't be 
like oh right okay thanks for doing that right now what we're going to do is i've got a plan it just she i i I don't know. I don't know what well, this to is expect why, from this character at all. This is and, why we yeah. won't get a Jon Snow POV because mm. they can only be single-minded in their purpose. Hers is vengeance. Yeah. Eric is duty. Mm -hmm. That's he was sent by Ned Stark to protect the people of the Riverlands, and that's what he was going to do. And when Catelyn Stark shows up, the Queen of the Riverlands. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know what my duty is. I'm going to give her a life right now. It's very different to the whites. So is she a fire white? Is she a fire? Yeah, she's, she's, she's George called them fire whites. He called Beric a fire white, didn't he? He said he felt sorry for for him or something, but he described him as a as a fire white. And Beric gave his flame of life to Catelyn, and and also you've got which is really strange because Catelyn was really quite devout, wasn't she, to the Seven? Mm -hmm. um, and what you've got is she's been resurrected by R'hllor and you've also got people like Gendry, you know, the, 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 everyone that's around her at the moment, the Brotherhood, seem quite devout in their beliefs. Are they? I feel um, like Taurus is, but they seem to have transferred a lot of the R'hllor a belief to Lady Stoneheart. Okay, well, so I she's feel, like I some godhead. Know. I feel like she's yeah. become a messi messianic type yeah. of yeah. character for them. Um, mm. Well, she's definitely in charge, you know, and whether or not that's they've abdicated, just, you know, we need a leader, you'll do. Like you said, they're in a bit of disarray and, per you know, she's the most Christ like character, you know, resurrected yeah. after three days. Yeah, she is betrayed. actually. Yeah. By, yeah. almost by a kiss you know yeah. i think they, they do describe yes. something in the red wedding as a kiss you know the 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 when she's dying um yeah but yeah there's yeah there's there's uh i think there's way more purpose in them now organized purpose and that feels to me like a very tully thing mm. like she's coming mm. but she's learning from little finger and hoster and she's yeah. putting a bit of manners on this group maybe but um uh, do I have anything else? No, I don't have anything else, actually. No, just, I mean, the significance in terms of the names for, I mean, it's quite obvious, you know, Lady Stoneheart, Mother Merciless, yeah. the Hanged Woman, the Silent Sister, um, and this reference again with the Silent Sisters being the Handmaidens of the Stranger. Um, she still seems to be able to read as well. Because she's she she reads uh, so she can speak and she can read. She's reading Tommen's letter, and and she seems to be kind of you know make sense of that that it, you know the seal that and that the Brienne brings with her. So yeah, just just to make note because I, I honestly the my, my remembrance of Lady Stoneheart was that she she was just an animated corpse that was symbolic of. Well, it's also, there's also a lot of evidence to suggest that the Brotherhood Without Banners are being actively um, encouraged by other families in the Riverlands. If they know that Catelyn Stark is running this, they're going to put all of their efforts into trying to help these guys. Uh, mm -hmm. It feels like if you die with a singular purpose uh, on your mind and you're resurrected by R'hllor, mm -hmm that flame burns even brighter, that purpose burns even brighter. What was John's purpose? To protect mm. the wall. So what, what kind of white will he come back as if he's resurrected by R'hllor? Mm. That would be interesting. Um, yeah. So uh, then we have a chapter you've been waiting for. Yeah. Cersei 10, the chapter where Cersei gets her. Wow. Great chapter. Yeah, this is it. Uh, uh, everything starts to crumble for Cersei in this chapter. Um, and just, it, I, I love this chapter. I love the fake outrage about Marjorie. This, she is my, you know, goddaughter that you can't be doing this. And just the whole, uh, throughout all of this, she keeps making references to herself as being Tywin's daughter. The one true queen, 
Ty, Lord Tywin's daughter, don't you know who I am? I'm Tywin's daughter. And you, you several times she thinks this throughout the chapter about that. I, I don't know if that's where she gets her strength from. That's her identity. It's not, I mean, I, you know, that's not what I would think when it, if it was like, you know, I'm trying to kind of, but not that I'm saying my, <laughs> You know, uh, that you know, my mom isn't an important woman in my life, but I don't sit here going, "I'll be okay," because I'm Ellen's daughter. I'll be okay. You know, I, I, I don't. It, she, she, she pins a lot onto the fact that whatever it is I'm doing, I'll be okay because but look who my dad was. So, you know, I'm, it's, I'm bound to be. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm covered. I'm covered just because of that. And, uh, I, yeah, I just find that really quite fascinating she is not safe and uh she, she's not safe and harm will come to her um which is what she says to tom and you are safe and no harm will come to you i completely agree with what you're saying cat i think she will be 100 percent responsible for tom and's death yeah uh, sorry before we move on to cersei connie wants to say the last place joan hart was before meeting with brianne was fair market what is fair market i believe it's a town and we find out in Jamie's chapter that a couple of Freys were killed there. A number of Freys were killed there. They were hung there. And it seems mm. like the chapter actually takes place after Jamie's chapter. I think that if I'm reading mm. that right, or they're taking place around the same time, but it feels like um, Jamie's chapter might have taken place before Brienne's chapter, just because of the Jamie chapter we get in dance. But what is in Fair Market is this, I, I would is in Fair Market. What is Sorry. in what's there? I would say uh, a person, probably, maybe even a whole group of Silent Sisters that are, are somehow working in tandem with Lady Stoneheart. I, 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 it could be that the, this is where a lot of the houses are meeting. Mm, could this be. This is where they're passing information through. Yeah, it that could, could be. be it. Because yeah. there's definitely there's definitely something fishy going on. Not to use mm -hmm. the Tully one, but yes, <laughs> something fishy going on. But anyway, Cersei, um, yeah, so do you think the fact that she repeats that over and over to herself indicates that she isn't Tywin's daughter? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there's... The secret Targ references. Yeah, there's there's reference to that in the next chapter as well, isn't there, in yeah, Jamie's chapter? A lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maybe she isn't. <laughs> I mean, she does say it a lot, and I think it would play into that definitely. But just on the the Tommen thing, um, that when she gets Tommen to sign those blank warrants, yeah, I'm guessing one of those warrants ends up being for her. Mm. Um, but he doesn't know that, or somebody else gets him to sign a warrant later. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that's the last nice moment that she'll ever have with one of her children, which did make me a little bit sad for her. Because she won't have a nice moment no. with any of her children ever again. No. Far from it. Far from it. I I think it's interesting though this tactic of um, hiding the truth inside a lie, like the whole thing that's constructed against Marjorie um, with the with the warrants. Um, and it's like, well, let's let's slip a couple of people in there that later on we're going to say oh no they were they actually they were had nothing to do with it like the red wind twins because she needs them she needs the she needs the fleet the red winds fleet to be able to um tackle stannis's troops um so at, at sea and at, at dragonstone at storm's end and dragonstone or wherever it is they are but she needs the red wine so putting them in the frame and then uh <clears throat> well, let, you know, we'll take knowing that we'll take them out later on, making it seem as though we're being fair and just. And but, but the point of what I'm trying to say is that is hiding, um, hiding the truth within a lie, which kind of, to me, plays into the whole. You know, what else is hidden inside something else, like the religion thing that I was been talking about hiding one religion inside another religion, like hiding the truth inside something that's bigger, that's that's a lie, or hiding a lie inside the truth, or, you know, it, it is that it, I just found that quite interesting so as a concept. Can we, yeah, can we talk about Marjorie for a second? Because th there is there is evidence. Cersei hasn't manufactured everything. Um, I'm not sure about the Maidenhead thing. By the way, it completely creeps me out that they actually examined this young girl to see if her hymen yeah. is still there. 
I mean, can you even tell that from a physical examination? Like how invasive does that have to be? Um, so, I mean, girls lose this all the time through gymnastics and horse riding. And mm -hmm. Marjorie was a horse rider, so she could have just lost it naturally. It doesn't have to yeah. be. Well, um, the moon tea is a little bit more problematic, but I've been thinking about this. She asks Picel for moon tea. And I feel like if she was trying to cover that up, she wouldn't ask such a Lannister loyal maester. I mean, it, mm. it has to be known. It seems to me that maybe in Highgarden, they use moon tea as, like we use contraceptives in our own world if women have particularly bad periods or get particularly mm. bad pain around their period. Right. Like really young girls end up on contraception pills, but not for contraception. Okay. So right. um, I know this because I was, they tried to put me on contraceptive pills for my ovary problems or whatever. Yeah. And it never, yeah. it, it, it didn't work for me, but I know that a lot of girls ended up on it at a young age, just trying yeah. to control the pain and manage the, the bleed and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so maybe this was something that her maester discovered that worked for her. Yeah. I don't, I don't have any evidence for this, except that sometimes she's described as pale, but that could be anyone. A lot of people are described as And bad. it is quite regular as well, isn't it? It yeah. seems to be like... It's not like, know, it's like she can't be just aborting Lovely. children all the time. No, so like as and a why would you ask pain Tyrell? control. Mm. I mean, the first thing, you're, like the Tyrells are too savvy. The first thing you're going to do is say, oh, no, don't go to Pycelle for anything. Um, I feel like maybe this is a lot more innocent than, than we think. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, but then why would she, you know, I would make it very clear if I was in that situation, look, you think, just so you know, this is what this is for. It's not. Because but I'm pregnant. This could be a cultural thing it. that they don't realise. Yeah, it might also, be. we don't know how much she knows. They they may not have laid mm. that. Or oh, will you ask for moon tea? She just she may not find that out until the trial. Mm. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. I was trying to come Ooh. up because I. It doesn't seem like she's. It seems so stupid to go to Pycelle for moon tea, unless somebody else went on her behalf and is lying. Mm. Maybe. Maybe oh, she's yeah, she's getting it for somebody else. Or it still seems too risky yeah. to go to Pytel unless it's a genuine yeah. mistake and yeah, she's yeah. using it for something else. I don't know. It is. It is very obvious, actually. Yeah, you'd think that she'd be getting it through, through her own. You know, through I don't know, Lady Elena or someone like that. It, also, that yeah. it yeah. seems a little bit too risky for Marjorie. It doesn't really, it doesn't, from what we know of her, it doesn't seem to fit. No, I don't know. That she would just sleep around like that mm. and risk losing so. the crown after everything she's been through. Mm. With Renly and Joffrey, it just seems a bit, especially when Joffrey was killed as well. Like, it's not like you're invincible. She knows how easy somebody could get to you. It feels like this is there's a lot going on here, but yeah, anyway. I agree. I agree. Um, so uh, if Cersei hadn't gone to the set, hadn't gone to the High Septon and to visit Marjorie, would the Fate Milton to have started a, a coup against the Crown? Would they have stormed the Red Keep? What would have happened? Do you think? Because it, it, she delivers herself to them. <laughs> they don't yeah. come to her, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think he would have fabricated some way to to to, to get, get her there. To get her there. Yeah. Um, Marjorie wants to confess something, or what? She would have been there in a in an instant, you know. Um, there would have been a way for him to get. It, she was so trapped in this situation without realizing and again it's like well this couldn't possibly happen because i'm tywin's lord tywin's daughter yeah but yeah um so she goes to visit marjorie yeah and i found this quite interesting actually that it is a cultural thing again it kind of makes me think about ariane being that entitled highborn Marjorie does try to appeal to her, almost like queen to queen. 
highborn lady to highborn lady you know they don't go straight at it straight away there is this the, the airs and graces and what have you but marjorie does seem to try to appeal to cersei can you get me out of this situation you know this is uh and then it's only when clearly cersei's like well you know trial by combat and then she realizes what meron tran and the other one whoever it is just no chance um that i think it'll you, be loris right i don't think loris is injured so i think he'll be back no that would be interesting I that would be really interesting up. yeah it, it is i think he's uh that would be a surprise but like you know it was only waters who told her that and look what he's done but um he yeah she we get the words why you vile evil scheming bitch so they finally it breaks down and they get really you know they roll the sleeves up and just well marjorie yeah tells her exactly what she thinks of her um yeah so that was that was quite an interesting exchange and then we get her running into the high septon i mean this is so <laughs> stupid like when you think of it like yeah it's just like cersei of course this was going to happen like mm. you can't like kettle black instantly gave in when they tortured him they didn't even torture him to the extent that you tortured what so yeah of course of course this happened it just feels mm. like and she instantly runs it's hilarious the way she just goes yeah right yeah <laughs> and she yeah run. um i feel though that they got this information from tana right that Tano went to the High Septon. The Merryweathers kind of screwed her, I think. It feels like somebody screwed her. Yeah, uh, well, Lancel admitted everything to the High Septon. But Lancel didn't know the intricacies of this current plot. Right? No, so, no, no, no. So yeah, I this would have. The plot was going <laughs> oh, completely. On. It was. It was. It was the Merryweathers, yeah. and the fact that just They're how all she town yeah well. and, and and she's like oh thank god they managed to get away with that you know because they could have told all my secrets and it's like oh cersei you just well, three steps yeah. Like, yeah like cersei everybody knows three and they steps all knew behind the yeah yeah um you, you were in a den of vipers they all got you so sh finally finally after however many books if you're not a fan of cersei you get this experience of her feeling this icy water shiver of fear that goes down her neck when the high sept and she just assumes that she can just trot back off to the red keep and he turns around and says no um and kettle black drops her right in it by saying that you're the queen that i've been fucking and he also admits to killing the previous high sept yeah. which wouldn't have gone down very well so that's something that's thrown that into might it even be more damning yeah probably like, from well from the high septum's point of view that. yeah 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 you plotted to kill the previous high septum you're going nowhere um but i mean technically she hasn't committed treason by just sleeping with like they needed that they needed that more than like she could sleep with kettle black and it's not treason well I, 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 it's more for this chapter really more for me is the implications of what happens next yeah so we she's already slipped up previously by basically weaponizing the faith by agreeing to that she's now slipped up by agreeing to having this holy trial by seven so and that sounds like something that used to happen but was outlawed we don't have that so she's constantly every time she thinks she's getting one over on them i mean she's she... she's giving them a massive advantage so who is how how is this going to take place will there be a trial by combat will it be a holy trial by seven um I, i'm interested i i feel like Kyburn also may have been the one that through tana kind of leaked this information he turns up with the information that the faith are torturing what uh the blue bard and mm -hmm. that he so far hasn't give, given in. So obviously they're not torturing him to the same extent that yeah. Kyburn tortured yeah. him. Yeah. Maybe not even at all because they see mm. the state that he's in, right? And um, maybe Kyburn has just heard that they're torturing him, but they're kind of like, what's the point? We couldn't do anything else to him at this stage. 
and they have enough from Kettle Black now. They don't really need the bard to, to sing his song, potentially. No. Maybe they, it would be probably better just to be nice to him. Like, Kyburn is so shysty, says Connie. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, she's in a bad state. What do you think will happen with Marjorie? Because I don't think it'll go down like it did in the show. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, but... Well, everything's everything's. Th th there's like a a continuity plan happening, isn't there? Now that Cersei's been taken out of the picture, there's the, there's the power dynamics within the small council, and you've got a Tyrell there on the on the small council. So it all depends on what their relationship is with the Faith. I don't know. Maybe they'll cut some kind of a deal with the High Septon. Maybe, um, maybe she goes through it all and, and and is ultimately proven innocent. Whether it's trial by combat or trial by a Holy Seven, um, I I I think she'll probably come through this. But I think she will ultimately. There'll be some sort of downfall of Marjorie. Marjorie is surplus to requirements now so because the next big thing is going to be Sansa and Cersei. So do you think? So I think in Dance, I believe it said that Marjorie has to do the Walk of Shame. Is that right? No, oh, I'm not. I can't even remember. Can't remember. Feel like there's something about her maybe having to do it. I could be missing. Or she, or she conf I don't know. If she can if she confesses to something. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know because the TV show was it was all very different. Yeah. Um. That is. Yeah. It's it's a harrowing chapter, but one of my favorite chapters actually. It's a shame. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, she's she's not in a good place, Cersei. And um, we've two chapters from Cersei in um, dance. So. What's worse? sleep deprivation being what being so tired that you literally your eyes uh, you it, it that feeling of being so tired you nod off to sleep and then within an hour you prodded up and woken up again confess 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 so that extreme sleep deprivation or the walk of shame what's 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 worse for you sleep deprivation that'll kill you yeah that will kill you That'll kill you before dehydration and starvation. I, I think it would send me a bit more crazy than the walk of shame would, because you would just. It might as actually. Jamie said you'd go to a through. different place in your head, yeah. wouldn't you, and just. just it might get actually through it. help her get through the walk of shame. Mm. That, the memory of that, because it's pretty, pretty dire. So. I mean, the other thing to remember as well about Marjorie is the small folks still love her. Whatever's going on, they're all shouting for her. Yeah, the mobs and the crowd outside aren't shouting for Cersei; they're shouting for Marjorie. Connie says both not approved by Amnesty International. <laughs> <laughs> Connie, which would you do? Which would you prefer? I think definitely I do the Walk of Shame, because it's really a punishment for everybody who has to see it. To be honest, um, but sleep deprivation. Oh, sleep deprivation! I can't deal with. No way. No way. So do, just before we leave this chapter, at the very end, we get Kyburn visiting. And he talks about, see, this is another thing that makes me think there's potentially like some sort of secret group of bastards is that when we're told things that are, things that have changed since she's gone, since she's been removed, um, is the, the kettle black that was in charge of, the, that was commander of the gold cloaks has gone and now been replaced by Humphrey Waters. Waters is a bastard name. So again, another another bastard that's been elevated to a position of power. I, I'm not saying that this was a was Rob, a Robert Robert's bastard, but I'm just saying that that yeah, I'm just wondering if there's some sort of secret group of bastards somewhere. Um, and Tommen's still in situ. Swift is still the hand. Pycelle is still there in situ. And and on their way to King's Landing are Tarly and Tyrell. So he must have gone back to um, High Garden at some point through all of this, uh, and oh, and also or Orian Waters, who like Vamoosh with the um, he, uh, Pycelle thinks he's going to be a pirate in the Stepstones, and we kind of hear something about that later on in one of the Ariane chapters, one of the release chapters. 
but Pycel does know a lot. You know, like what? Why? How did he? You know, it's like oh, he's the the the, the bastard who's got the royal fleet. He's gone. He's fucked off. He's disappeared somewhere. And there's a whole load of gossip about what could have happened there. Yet Pycel seems to be the one who knows the truth. Here's the question: mm. What if the High Septon knows that Marjorie is innocent? What if this is all for show? And that Pycelle has manipulated this so that Marjorie is imprisoned for her own safety, so Cersei can't get at her. Maybe, yeah, like the Red Wing twins, like Perhaps. you know, for show, mm -hmm. imprisoned or accused of something just mm -hmm. for show, so that so that when the truth comes out, she'll be exalted even more by the crowds. And I don't know, possibly, possibly. Uh, I mean, but that's, that's I'm just thinking though on the on that kind of bastard train of thought is uh, Oran Waters and Humphrey Waters. There seems to be a lot of waters, yeah, yeah. and things going on. Like, is that you, you know, bookmark? You know, I'm just going to mentally bookmark that. Is there some sort of secret group of bastards? But um, well, it does doesn't Ke isn't Kevin on his way back as well? Yes, he, he comes good. he comes to visit her, doesn't he? Yeah, uh, and then obviously she sends that letter at the end of the chapter. Yeah, wow. So while we have Cersei falling from grace and losing power, we have Jamie acting in a great kind of leadership role in the mm -hmm. Riverlands. He's mm -hmm. not doing too bad. Yeah. Apart from he's been undermined by the Brotherhood of High Banners and the Riverland conspiracy at every turn. Mm -hmm. um, for people who like the King Jamie theory, this is the chapter for them. And originally, Jamie was to take the throne. That was the idea in the original format. I don't, I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be now, but originally when, when George envisaged a, a trilogy, Jamie right. was supposed to end up on the throne, um, which would be interesting because Jamie actually had the chance to take the throne mm. and find out in Game of Thrones mm -hmm. through that. He didn't. Uh, the other thing is, there's, if Jamie is a Targaryen, He's got now the best claim to the throne. If because well with, if you take Cersei out of the picture, which I think Cersei will probably take herself out of the picture, Jamie is the best claim to the throne. He's mm. also male, so that helps. But um yeah. Any people who are fans of King Jamie, this is mm. the chapter I feel that kind of points in the direction of that. He's very much uh in a leadership capacity here he's de he's juggling a lot here and um, but we find out at the beginning of this that uh oh and the other thing i was thinking is he's getting more healthy as well and he's looking better um mm -hmm. he finds his stump ugly and everything but he's getting a bit more healthy and like i said last week with the prophecy the prophecy says a younger another more beautiful will come and take all that you love or all that you hold dear. That could be Jamie if Jamie ends up being more beautiful than Cersei. When we get to that shame chapter, Cersei certainly feels like she's lost all her beauty. And there's a lot of evidence to suggest she has through drinking and all that kind of thing. Um, but Jamie may end up even being more beautiful, not just physically, but a more beautiful person as well. Um, so it could be that the younger, another more beautiful could be Jamie. Um, Jamie is beautiful in the show, I have to admit. But um, yeah, it could be him. He could be the one that could come and take everything she holds dear. Maybe. So yeah, so I love the little coup that's happened at River Run with Ed Muir letting the blackfish go. <laughs> uh, clearly forewarned and forearmed by Thomas Evans about mm -hmm. Kat's resurrection, I, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. um, big question, where's the blackfish? Is that your question too? Well, my question was, will we see the Blackfish again? But I think, have we been told that we're, we're told that we'll see yeah. Jane Westerling in the prologue of yes. Wins? Have we been told that we'll see the Blackfish again? I think we have. I think so. I never checked. I hope so. It would well, be a terrible way for him to go out. That's yeah, a it, show thing to do. Yeah, it is a terrible, off the page, vague, well, will we, won't we ever see him again? Um, uh, yeah, I think that he's probably, uh, I'd like to think that he was on his way to uh, Greywater Watch 
to to like hook up with the reeds uh and get some kind of, because basically Edmure surrenders river run doesn't surrender the blackfish but he surrenders river run but it's kind of tenuously held at the moment and there's just factions everywhere left right and center so it's it, it's it's not it's you know it's not very solid at the moment and we get that sense through em and frey all the way through river run is mine river run is mine it's like mm, but hanging there by a thread so he could have gone to gray water watch to try and get some you know st strengthen his position back in river run maybe i don't some know. allies like he has to have help so the riverlands mm. like the riverland a lot of houses in the riverland want to cement this northern alliance it could turn up in the veil that's what i was thinking mm. what if the blackfish tries to hide out in the veil but that would be a terrible end as well um yeah i i don't know if he'll go to the veil just because little finger is so untrustworthy i feel like he's flying the stark banners he's gonna go north mm. he wasn't flying tully banners in river on he's flying stark banners mm. now, the other thing is the blackfish would be one of the few witnesses to rob's will he could also be one of the few witnesses to any information about hoster or lisa or sweet yeah. robert's actual yeah. father yeah. If, if most people believe it might be Littlefinger. and um, he could also uh know about jane westerling and whether she's pregnant or not yeah. now there's a huge Jane Westerling question here as well, where a lot of people now, I believe George said, or Linda and Elio, or somebody said that this is a mistake in the text that Jane, so a lot of people believe that the, the, that the Jane in this chapter that Jamie meets is not Jane, that's her sister, because of the description of her hips. Oh, all right this? yeah 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 but i because previously when she's described by a cat she's described as having childbearing hips yeah yeah, yeah. but here it's described as thin uh, hips also she's quite unruly which jane was quite confident anyway mm. um it goes to slap her and jamie stops her mm. and sybil is very like oh we need this this and this mm. But yeah, so I don't know how people, apart from the hips thing, I'm not sure if there's much evidence to suggest that this isn't Jane. Jane. But no, I don't know. know how you feel about that. I think though there's a there's a division in the Westerlings between what? the father and the brother and Jane and this mother. I think this mother is uh, very much a Lannister woman and the others are not. Yeah. So there's a suggestion that Reynold, Jane's brother, might be alive, that he was the one who let Grey Wind out and attacked uh, Freys, mm -hmm. and then he jumped into the river while he was being um, shot with, with by archers. And there's a suggestion, I know Lady Gwen has a theory on this, um, that the suggestion that he's still alive. Um, Jamie thinks, how much does Lady, or how much does Lord Gavin know or Gowan, no. Um, but I wonder, is the reverse true? How much does Lady Sybil know? Yeah. How much are the Westerlings actually plotting against the Lannisters? I would guess a lot. I guess if Jane is pregnant, that puts them in a way better position than anything the Lannisters could offer. The Lannisters yeah. are burning everything around them. So, um, yeah. She seems like a frightened animal. Jane Westerling in this chapter, and she seems to be. Uh, she's saying that she's not not pregnant, and the and well, she doesn't really say that. She kind of runs for the door, but it's Sybil turns around and says, "No, she's not pregnant. We made sure of it." But if it is somebody other that you know, if it is her younger sister, because she'd be she'd be showing by now, wouldn't she, if she was pregnant? Yeah, because how long like the red wedding happened at the end of storm ed muir's wife is pregnant mm -hmm. so let's say they get pregnant around the same time mm -hmm. ed muir's wife is still a few months away from giving birth i guess yeah so jane must be two but i mean there's there's other things with the 
theory that her clothes are torn or there's evidence of tearing on her clothes which may cover up a pregnancy like maybe they've been expanded i mean people stretch these things i, have to I can't wait for this prologue for winds of winter that's the biggest thing and it's right at the beginning as well just because of the hints of Jane Westerling being in it, and like we, I've said before, there's that we're on that like you know the prologue, um, swapping between it being a Maestro or the Citadel or Beyond the Wall, and we're now up to a Maestro, a Maestro or the Citadel again. And I'm, in my mind, I'm hoping that this is Jane Westerling at Greywater Watch with a Maestro. Delivering from grey water watch delivering a baby and the meister has to die because a meister has to die in or someone has to die in the chapter um i also i have because of said the knowledge of the royal baby and we also haven't seen um we've we've had a lot of women die in childbirth off uh screen if you like in this book but we actually haven't witnessed a woman die in childbirth yet and it's so common that it's something that I think could potentially happen and maybe the maester is trying to sneak that baby out of there and, and then that's another the baby brought up in secret in you know yeah. yeah another royal heir yeah um <laughs> so if there's also this thing you know Jamie has sent people after them okay yeah. so um Forley Preston Sir Forley Sir Preston he is warned that he's to kill Edmure if Edmure steps out of line yeah but number one you take Jane out if she tries to do anything basically mm -hmm. you keep Jane she's number one concern mm -hmm. so it would be very interesting if this Preston guy ends up killing Jane or a maester or something or takes out a lot of them or whatever like that would be quite interesting because that would mean Jamie is actually breaking his oath yeah and taking up arms against Stark and Tully's, which he's been very careful not to do. He's he not. Even, he's, he's definitely not so far. Yeah, he won't even punish Edmure for letting the Blackfish go yeah. because he doesn't want to take up arms against them. So um, I feel like there's something there's there's something about this Preston guy that's going to happen. Um, yeah. So uh, Reynold, I guess we could see Reynold alive again, right? There's no. They didn't find his body, I don't think. Uh, no, Reynolds when he was, he's the heir, isn't he? He's Walder's heir. Yeah. Um, and then we have uh, Tully men, old Tully men, taking the black, going to the wall. Do mm. they know about the will? Do they know about Rob's... Uh, they may know, right? They may yeah. have information in the will that now could be going north to well, John. Well, it all depends on, well, unless this, unless a lot of the planning in, of this happened before they set off the Red Wedding, it all depends on who was there with him en route to, because this all happened on the way to the Red Wedding, didn't it? Um, yeah. He set off, you know, he set, um, uh, one of the Mormon women, Mage Mormon, was it? And, um, somebody one of the other northmen who i can't remember the name of now set them off on the you know to go to go and uh deliver that letter that had, you know we can assume is his will that's you know and the Malisters did anyone survive the red wedding to be able to have, take that knowledge with them yeah you know i don't know so um then we have the big thing in this chapter which is the dream and yes at one point, it kind of, it begins with, almost begins with uh, Jamie saying something and ending with the word me and the me, 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 me echoes. And it feels like his mother is coming to him at a crucial point yeah. and trying to get Jamie to take back his own life and his own identity. It seems, and then once this dream is over, that's kind of what he's doing. She gives him this information. She stands above a bar, so like this. I had to look it up. Something that holds a coffin. I did not know that. Or a corpse. A beer, yeah. Yeah, beer, is that how it's pronounced? Yeah. Oh, it's like the German word for beer. Yes, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. So she delivers her message. So this made me think that, is she urging him to bury or burn his Lannister identity, which is kind of what he does when he burns Cersei. 
yeah. when he burns her letter because they use the beer going into a cremation as well. Yeah. So that's kind of what it feels like that this is like him killing his Lannister self, you know, find out who you are. Um, and then he says, she says uh, something, Tywin wanted us to be a knight and a queen or Tywin wanted you to be a knight and a queen. And he says, well, we are that. And she cries. Mm. And this is where I wrote, well, he's not a knight. He might actually be a king if he's the Targaryen. And I wonder, did you ever know your father truly? Yes. Yeah. So many theories also, from this. So many, theory. so many theories. Um, I thought this happened a lot earlier, a lot earlier in Me like too. When, yeah. when he was escaping from Harrenhal or whatever yeah. uh, or not escaping but on his way back to King's Landing from Harrenhal I thought that that it happened then or around the same even way earlier than that around the same time that he had the dream about where him and Brienne underneath Casterly Rock or I also thought that it happened when he was standing vigil you know for uh, straight after Tywin had died um, but it's not, it's way further into the story. Um, and it's a dream. Is it a dream? He's dreaming about the vigil. This is no. when it happens. He's dream. It's not at the vigil when he's sleep deprived. And that's when I imagined it happened, but it wasn't. It was a dream about the vigil. Um, well, it's, he says that, um, she says, well, do you have two hands? And he looks down and he sees a stump. Yeah. And she says, well, then you're not dreaming. Yeah, yeah. So he, when he wakes up then, he, walks, he wakes to darkness, shivering. The room had gone cold as ice. And then that continues on for a little bit. And then it says, uh, Jamie recoiled, started for a moment. This is when he opens the window. Um, and or go, opens the chamber and go, goes outside. And um, he reached the window. His barefoot came down to something wet. Jamie recoiled, startled for a moment. His first thought was of blood, but blood would not have been so cold. It was snow drifting through the window. Mm. So this, I think, is further evidence that he's Targaryen because if you're fire, snow is the opposite. Mm. So that's going to make you recoil. And okay. fire and blood thinking of snow i feel like there's just too many threads here that it's certainly the best evidence we have for somebody being a targaryen uh yeah uh, and and in the same vein the twins not being tywins mm -hmm. um especially with cersei yeah. repeating it like she relies on it so much and mm -hmm. for it not to be true yeah it yeah. would be devastating the thing is Will we ever know this for sure? Will they ever know this for sure? Is this something that's... That Somebody will know. Confirm? Somebody will know. Somebody who's still alive will know. Well, like, my question is, will this ever be confirmed? Is yeah, Jamie, I think is so. Is Jamie the third head of the dragon? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. I think the three heads of the dragon is something different than like being a dragon rider or whatever but oh yeah I, so do i yeah so do i yeah i i i oh for me i'm just going to go through a couple of things here okay. um there's a lot of talk in this chapter about wolves uh that uh, will we get the question that i've got is will we get an, an on page scene or point of view, whether it's from Arya Worgen or whatever, of a big wolf massacre in in the Riverlands, where either we get to see it on page through a point of view, or we because with it, it feels like something's building with these wolves. This pack's getting bigger, more and, and more wolves, humans. The wolves attack, not somebody attacks the wolves. That the wolves. Yes, the wolves. Yeah. The wolves attack. At like you know, there's a huge human massacre caused by this enormous wolf pack that are uh there's it's like there's this like veil of or layer of 
threat or doom or something that's around them and it's the wolves and they're not moving from the Rebellions. they've been there for a long time so there's something probably keeping them there um and i don't know whether or not there's going to be like some big confrontation where a, a whole load of humans get taken out by wolves in the Rebellions. um also what you said really about Jamie's point of state of mind and the fact that he, he is uh, an effective commander. He's doing the best that he possibly can to strengthen Emin Frey's position in River Run. Um, and he, he seems to have these like heroic plans. Like he's, you know, he's, he's definitely got this kind of Kingsguard knight, knightly, um, you know, he wants to stick to his vows and he wants to be heroic. But at the same time, he's got this suicidal tendency as well of, um, it, it, and I think it's to do with, I think he's suffering from a massive amount of PTSD from the loss of his hand. And it's, that's shaping it, what his personality is likely to be in the future. You know, maybe it will be King Jamie, the even-handed, or... Oh, I can't hear you. Oh, still can't hear you. Is it me? That could be me. Possibly me. And um... Hello, no, no, I'm gonna to have to come out again. Back in a minute. I don't know if you can hear me. Something, it's like. Um, my static. mic. Oh, I can hear you. It's my it's mic. Like, it's oh. broken. Wait now, two seconds. You keep talking okay. about what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, what was I talking about? Jamie's state of mind. Um, I think that he is like i said he's got ptsd and this is making a lot of his uh th this is going to be something that will shape his character and his personality he wants to be heroic but he's very vulnerable you know if you're going to do a risk assessment on jamie this would him be but he's very vulnerable at the moment even though he's coming across as being being effective and effective commander and he's shaping plans and he's you know he's the go-to guy he's doing stuff he's so much more effective at what he's doing than Cersei trying to you know, cling on to power in, in King's Landing um, but he'll be the first one into the fight or he'll be the first one over the wall or he'll be the you know he's he 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 worries me <laughs> it worries me that actually maybe you will be taken out by Brienne and then Brienne ultimately will, I don't, I don't know, I think there's going to be some real sadness I think, around Jamie. Can you hear me now? Yes, can I you can, yes. Okay, yeah. grand. I'm going to have to get a new mic. Um, so <laughs> I wonder, will he have to kill Brienne? Maybe. Because I, I love Brienne, but I feel like Jamie needs to, Jamie's more important to the end game yeah oh yeah yeah i've got like i said i've kind of gotten over that now i would have i would have hand, you know arm wrestled anyone <laughs> before this reread who said that brienne was going to make it but now i'm kind of like yeah the, the the writing's on the wall here i'm i'm kind of i'm, I'm at peace with that prospect unfortunately so, yeah with the snow coming through the window and he thinks of blood do you think there's some prophetic nature to that? Could that snow be Jon Snow coming through the window? Could yeah, that Jon Snow coming for him, kind of? I think there's just, it, it's that shock almost of, oh my God, right, okay. Along with everything else that's going on, with a hard winter is just around the corner with like no crops, no food, everything's going to get a million times worse and just in case you'd forgotten about that here's a reminder here it is and we kind of get that reinforced again next chapter with sam and the ravens the white ravens and the black ravens don't like each other which i thought was funny well he does he does really um 
he does really go into a king's state of mind mm. very quickly because that's his first thought. It's very John Snow like, actually. Mm. Oh my God, I thought we'd get another crop. Yeah. Winter is coming. Yeah. People are going to die. Yeah. You know, this is Jamie. This is the Jamie like that saved the realm from yeah. his father, <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe twice. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm definitely on the Jamie is a Targ train yeah. and Cersei too, obviously. Um, although I think you can get pregnant from two different men, isn't that right? I think that's happened. Oh God, that's so complicated. Yeah, I think that. But they're identical, so it has to be one father. So it has to be. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Connie yeah. says uh, maybe a Stoneheart will absorb the pack of wolves. Yeah, maybe there'll be like you know the the a, a weapon for yeah. Lady Stoneheart. Yeah, and then um, Connie says, "Lost hand, lost time when Dumpsiri, Cer Cersei lost Tyrion." Yeah. yeah, he's he definitely lost everything. This that was my only question about this dream. Why does Joanna come to him, not Cersei or Tyrion? Maybe she tried with them and had, they were yeah. weren't open to it. Um. It certainly feels like Jamie, he's very strong, but he's lost, potentially lost more than the others. I mean, Tyrion yeah. has lost quite a lot as well, but he's on his way to maybe glory of some sort. Um, so Joanna is still alive. Yeah, she's a silent this, sister. Yeah. yeah, this is her still being alive. Um, yeah, I mean, is she working actively to put him on the, the, the throne? Is this something that's maybe. in her head? Is she? I mean, her and Tywin were in love, so she's got to be as scheming as he was in some way. Yeah, yeah. And you know, now, now that now that Tywin's dead, maybe there's you know, whatever it was that kept them apart, or where she had to like I don't know, fake her own death or whatever. Um, <sighs> it, it, that no longer exists now that Tywin's not around. But if Brienne know. ends up being the silent sister. <laughs> Which is another thing that we've talked about potentially. Um, yeah, that could be interesting to see if she ends up meeting Joanna. So um, he gets the letter from Cersei right at the end of the chapter, which he just ignores. Yeah, right. Yeah. Damn right. Yeah. Would he have ignore, ignored that? Had the did the dream cause him to ignore that? I guess. Did the dream give him the strength to ignore that letter? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Joanna sees his redemption, according to Connie, maybe ashamed of Cersei's ugliness. Uh, um, yeah, I think, I think potentially, like, there's no way J she could have gone to Jamie before Jamie lost his hand, or had Jamie not lost his hand. There's yeah. no way his arrogance wouldn't have allowed wouldn't have allowed her to listen. And definitely, Cersei and Tyrion are still arrogant as hell, so they're not going to listen to anything. Um, so then we have the last chapter, very Final exciting chapter. chapter. Final chapter, uh, chapter. um, wow. fan five. So, uh, yeah, we're at the Citadel arrival at the Citadel. So, uh, oh, there's so many things from this chapter. I'm going to try and keep it as brief as possible because I've just looked over. at the time and I'm like, oh my god, I've got a million things to do before I go to bed. Um, the, well, okay, the big thing for me from this chapter is confirming the suspicions and all the theories that are out there about the Meisters being really dodgy. These grey rats or grey sheep, as they're described by um, uh, Marwin in here. But that just put like poor, poor Meister Eamon. You know, if you're going to be, but th that's not just like the most supreme um, conundrum, isn't it? You're a Targaryen, but you're also a Meister. <laughs> that's yeah. like the worst possible combination of something to be because he even, Marwin even says in this chapter, uh, it's kind of good in a way that he died before he got here because they would have just killed him the minute that he got here. And it's like, whoa. They were keeping him the furthest possible distance that they could 
from Old Town, from the Citadel, right up on the wall, completely remote. No one's ever going to sit. He's, he's, he's just, he's safe up there. He's not going to come and like start telling us about these dragon prophecies and blah, 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 whatever. We don't have to worry about him as a threat or whatever, destabilizing, destabilizing our plans. And I just thought that was so sad because Eamon has all these fond memories of forging his chain in Old Town and drinking cider in the inn and all these kind of stories that, he, you know, the things that he was telling Sam on the way over. So he would, he, so yeah, he was clueless, obviously, about what the true nature of the Meisters were, I would think. But uh, they would have killed him. They would have killed him the minute he stepped into Old Town. It wouldn't have so, been anything like they expected it to be. Yeah. So the, so um, we're told that kind of he that Eamon was wasted on the wall, that his blood was dangerous. But it's not like the Meisters don't believe that magic exists. Like magic exists for them. So like did they send Eamon to the wall because of his blood? Because he's dangerous? Or did they keep him at the wall because they needed his blood at the wall? Do you know what I mean? Like, did they keep him away from the Citadel because they didn't want a Targaryen near the Citadel? Or did they keep him away from the Citadel because they needed Aemon at the wall? Actually, maybe it's just both, right? Like, it feels yeah, like they, it's, it's not like they don't believe in magic, right? They no, believe no, in no. magic. Well, they know that it exists. It's just that what they want for the world there's no place for it for magic and i'm presuming because they've got this supreme control over knowledge learning but basically the truth they could they control it they're like i don't know they're like twitter aren't they <laughs> and the ravens yeah. are like you know they've got they've got control over what people know and the history even so before we get to the, magic to, would destabilize that and take that control. If it's about power and control, magic messes all of that up. Yeah. Dragons, you can't beat them, you can't win against them. So we'll have none of that so that we can retain the control over what people know. We you know, controlling the masses, mm -hmm. whatever. But that, that I think that um anything that destabilizes that, like Marwin said, for God's sake, don't go, you know, this was all planned, we saw it all. You were you were pulled away from uh from conf well telling Theobald or whatever everything that you told us because you just wouldn't you know you, you that that's too dangerous and they so, they laugh it off in the tv show it's kind of like oh how ridiculous these silly stories about magic and ha ah, you know oh you don't be don't be so silly and they just kind of poo poo it off but here i think it would be maybe they would on the surface just like oh you know grumpkin snarks and you know uh, but they would just quietly take you out that'd be it you'd be poisoned somehow Some, somehow you would just disappear and nobody would ask any questions yeah but before we get to the maesters so we find out that um the ironborn have taken quite a lot of this area already mm. uh, uh what the hell are the high towers doing and what is their plan? Because the high terrors, I'm so confused by them. I, I feel like they're yeah. up to something because they're not coming out to defend. Uh, like old high tower hasn't been seen in years. No, it, it does sound a bit dodgy, doesn't it? But I mean, it, it all I got, what I got from that is the the clearly the Iron Men, the Ironborn, are pouring out of the Shield Islands and closing in, closing yes. in on old town and you also get the sense at the end of this chapter that sam's story is going to be he's going to be neatly tucked into the citadel and old town probably for at least the next book but he's he's there for the foreseeable because marwin marwin has advised him to just stay where you are it's safe where you are just say yes where you need to say you know just appease them don't don't be don't be mentioning dragons or magic or anything just forge your chain stay here it's the safest place for you to be you, uh, you know he's sending gilly off or whatever but i don't know whether they'll see each other again what that means for the future like i said this chapter for me there's a lot of 
setting up potential things that could happen in the future. Well, this is where George has to start skipping. Yes. So, oh, Gilly's in Horn Hill. Oh, okay. We mm. just skipped Horn Hill. Like, this is where, like, he's going, oh, crap. We I need Sam to have gotten this much of his training done, but he also yeah. needs to get back to the wall. Like, how long does it take to be a maester? Okay, we're going to have to skip, start skipping. Okay, he meets Marwyn. Okay, Marwyn really needs to be with Danny or needs to be on his way to Danny, or, like, by the time Sam gets there. So as soon as he meets Sam, it's like, Marwyn is gone. Okay, I got what I needed from you. I'm off. Yeah. Uh, which is keeping in Marwyn's character as well, but it moves really quickly. This is only the fifth Sam chapter, and we have not seen Sam again. Um, no wins chapters about Sam. This is it, and it feels like Sam's chapters are so dense and so epic. The very first chapter we had of Sam, don't you remember? He was yeah. running away. It was like a film. The entire chapter when they were running away from the White well, Walkers. Even the and description the... of walking yeah. towards Marwyn and just the yes. area. It just sounds amazing, and like the library scene in in the show was done very well, but. I'd love to have seen this area as well. It, it's it does. Incredible. It does seem to stray a little bit towards the end of the chapter where they're talking about this and the the and the neat Marwin. It does feel a little bit Harry Potterish to me yes. towards the end of this chapter. It feels like we're meeting a new professor at I Hogwarts. <laughs> uh, so Connie said Blood Raven was going to the Wall as punishment. They sent him away from King's Landing, away from his king brother. Mm. and she also asks in their high tower trying to conjure some spells and um, and Elamor asks so I wonder if maesters have a say where they go or if they're assigned to a certain lord or castle I'm guessing some of them can have mm. a say I'm guessing if you want you can put in requests I mean certainly priests can they can put in a request as to where they want to be yeah, but I mean, I don't think that they've got any control over sort of, you know, keeping in touch with the family and everything. They give up the, the name kind they of, don't they? give up that, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, so maybe they could just go where they're sent. But at the same time, if you, I'm, I'm sure they struggle to, to find a maester that's willing to go to the wall. So if somebody volunteers to go to the wall, they'll jump at it. Mm. Oh yeah, okay. You're going to volunteer to go to the wall. Fine, great, go. Did and your Targaryen did volunteer to go to the wall? Did he just well, find himself is, there? I think this or... is what Elamor might be wondering. Right. How much yeah. of it is assigned, and how much of it? Do you I get think he's pretty strategic. I think it's all about control of knowledge, power, information, and flow of information. Um, and if you think about how they operate, given the resources that they've, they've got in that time period, um, they're a bit of a force to be reckoned with, but wrapped up in a, we will help you with, you know, raise your children and we will birth you, you know, we'll, 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 we'll be everything that you need us to be. It also means so that they've let the ball fall at the wall. That's a lot of rhyming, but yes. like they haven't kept an eye on what's happening up there, really. I mean, I'm sure Eamon kept them informed, but because there hasn't been a change of maester for a while, yeah. they haven't really got fresh eyes on the situation there. In fact, they don't have any eyes because Eamon went blind. Mm. So there's, there, there's something they haven't kept their finger on the pulse up there, I feel. And also, we don't really know if Bloodraven had any influence on Eamon or Eamon had any influence on Bloodraven. Definitely he was stronger at the walls. So there's a lot of questions about Eamon. Um, well, in the, uh, and again, I don't want to make cross-reference cross anything of this with the TV show, but in the TV show, the reference to the wall was just like, oh, it's fine, it's fine, you know, it's fine until it falls yeah. and it's not fallen. So we're just going to ignore it until that happens. It yeah. could be that. Until Sam fixed that horn. Yeah, he has with them, and um, so yeah. So uh, we don't like we could spend ages on this, but I'm conscious of the time. And um, so obviously we meet Marwyn. Uh, we also have Sorella, Alaris, yes. yeah. um, who hears Sam's tale, and this is when he starts thinking about the Sphinx and all that kind of thing, and mm -hmm. which I completely forgot about. But you reminded me last week, so thank you. And. <laughs> um, uh, 
I he's so quick to tell him her his whole story. It made mm. me wonder, does she have some sort of skills for controlling yes. inf yeah. information out of people? I thought, yeah. He doesn't, yeah. He's, he, he holds back, though, on Bran, which is the one thing that he, he's held on to for a while, and on Gilly's baby. They're the two yes. pieces of information that he holds back, which very important piece of information. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, what else do I have here? Well, I didn't realize there was a few things that I didn't realize. I didn't realize that uh, I didn't realize that that Marwin was kind of doing this to. I suppose it's to honor my Strayman, but also he's doing it to replace him on this. He's going on this mission on behalf of my Strayman, who can no longer do this mission. Um, I'd forgotten about that. I thought that he just decided right. This is the right time. I've been waiting for this. Maybe he has, but actually he's kind of doing this quite, I don't know, it just feels quite noble and honourable that he's kind of doing this. He's replacing Maestro Eamon on yeah. this mission to bring her back. But also I totally forgotten, completely forgotten about the pasty faced young acolyte who was there and that Sam got bad vibes from him. Um, and now to the question, who was the other? And it was like, oh, and then it, it reveals at the oh, end. Oh, yeah, of no, I, can't, I remembered that from the prologue. Totally forgot, yeah. totally forgot that he turned up there and that he was yeah. so, wow. Because I Ross remember Candles. that being, when I first read Feast, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Sam's asking what feeds the flames because the, the glass candle is lit in Marwyn's room. Yeah. And it's this weird, um, inside the room, there's all sorts of maps and tapestries and potions and this black candle is huge. It's three foot, huh? I didn't realize this again. It's massive, it's three foot. And it, it's, it's glowing with this light that again seems unfeasibly light. And it's, well, the it's very intense, the colors and the reflections and I mean, the glass candles, they were shaped to look like glass candles, but they are that's almost to make human beings comprehend what their power is. Yeah. Like to yeah. see them as almost light telecommunication. Like it's yeah. almost like it helps people understand it a bit more. Um, I, I just to go back on what you said there about Marwin, like how... Is Eamon the first Targaryen maester ever? Because there's so. no, because there's yeah, they hate so. one another, right? So he has to be the only yeah. one ever. Um, That's just like putting a like a target on your head, really. Yeah. If you think about it, it really is. Um, but it's also a method of protecting yourself. Yeah, like going to the wall is. A method of protecting yourself the only way to do that is to kill somebody or to be a maester well they did marwin does say in this mm. chapter that aemon should have been the should have been in king's landing and been the the arch maester you know he basically aemon should have been pycelle mm -hmm. um but because of his because of his targaryen blood of course he should have been the grand maester so but is again, that they didn't want they want they wanted to keep him as far away as possible from any action. Is that what Eamon thought would happen? That that was the best way to serve the realm and to serve his family as a maester, and maybe bring those two rival rival those two groups yeah. together. Well, could have could have been yeah it could have yeah. been yeah that could have been his his plan, but um, it feels to me though that. Marwyn didn't necessarily need Sam. I mean, he, he got good information from Sam. Mm. But it feels like he didn't necessarily need Sam. It feels like he just wanted to wait to meet Sam and see what he was. Yeah, he's put um, a lot of things together himself, hasn't he? But I think Sam's given him a little bit of ex the extra information that he needed from Meister Eamon. It kind of feels like when... Um, I was trying, I'm trying to pinpoint it in my head. There's some time when John is introduced to somebody maybe it's Tyrion the first time they're introduced it feels like 
Marwan already knew that Sam was going to be there and he's heard about Sam, maybe through Eamon, and wanted to see for himself if this was, if this young man was the guy they need to unlock the mystery they need to find out whatever it is they want to find out. Wasn't it the wildlings up at the wall when they were coming, when John was letting them through the wall and six, skin, six skins? That runs into yeah. yeah, runs into ghost and the and they're like and yeah. They're it's when do you know what it is? It's when he goes to talk when he's in the tent with torment and man mm -hmm. sits back because he wants to get kind of the measure of him first. He yeah. knows who he is exactly. He doesn't need to be told that he's the bastard of like he already knows yeah. all of the information he needs. But he wants to measure him up first. It feels like that here with Marwan. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I, I don't know. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's as if they need Sam. They need Sam. And that they maybe they know from Eamon, like, listen, this is the kid. If anyone is going to find the information, if anyone is going to stick their head in the book and not get bored and not quit, it's this kid. You need this kid. He seems to take quite a scientific approach to magic, though, Marwin. I think, you know, I mean, the way he describes prophecy is like a bit kind of woo-woo, a bit like, you know, what does he say? A prophecy is like a treacherous woman. Yeah. She'll bite off your dick. So it's the, the and that's the nature of prophecy. It can be like that. It, 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 you know, it's intriguing and then it just evaporates or it just, it turns into something else and it's like, oh. Um, but also he, this thing about the, the candles. So you use, you can use the candles to enter dreams, enter visions, to communicate with people or, or, or like across the other side of the world. So that's quite magical, but also it kind of seems a lot more specific and a lot more, I, I don't know, sci-fi, sci scientific kind of in a way, much more than prophecy, which is just complete like... So this, this is really important coming off the Jamie chapter yeah. because the Jamie chapter, this seems to be how Joanna is communicating to him maybe through yeah, maybe. Panel. Yeah. It also um, in the Jamie yeah. chapter, we get, um, I think it's in that Jamie chapter, we get a reference to Maggie the Frog and he doesn't really remember her. Yeah, and he doesn't remember her from the, he, well, he remembers remember, the, um, the spices, her, her grandmother was some yeah. like witch from, uh, you know, from Essos. I remember yeah. the, um, when Davos' fingers went through this, they were saying that how close could Cersei and Jamie be if the, the most defining moment in Cersei's life isn't something that Jamie is even vaguely yeah. familiar with. Yeah. They obviously don't do pillow talk, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and also, just that prophecy will bite your dick off. That's exactly what Cersei has always wanted. Yes. <laughs> She's penis envy, you know? Um, <laughs> so it is, it does like just coming off that Jamie chapter. Jamie has never had a prophecy that he's tried to even live up to or has never had a prophecy that he's had to worry about for yeah. on behalf of Cersei's on behalf of Cersei or on his own behalf because that prophecy would say a lot to him as well because they're his children yeah um, yeah but he didn't he, I don't he think he knows does he doesn't even know yeah. no yeah so the fact that he doesn't know is kind of telling or he does know so, and it just it's not something he's thought about if Marwyn can read you know, he knew that Sam was on his way and they intercepted and all that kind of stuff. Sorry, I'm just doing a bit of clean up on this mic. I can see, yeah. <laughs> um, if Marwin knows that that's a faceless man, that that's that, that Pate is a faceless man, do, do, uh, you know, do they off, off page? Has he kind of revealed himself and said, look, this is who I am, this is my agenda, and Marwin's gone, oh, funnily enough, well, let's work together then. And I knew you were coming because of the glass candle. You know, I, I, does he does he know, or what do you that think? Page is that? a faceless man. Maybe, I mean, their agendas might line up for they sure. Might. Uh, yeah. But yeah. if Jacken has gone rogue or not, because he seems... I don't, it's about the dragons, isn't it? it Mark, Marwyn seems to be like pro dragon, pro magic, and I think possibly Jacken, but not Kate, necessarily the Jacken, uh, 
uh, the faceless men are not. They, uh, I don't, interesting combination and what will happen. And also, we're left with Sam feeling like, oh, he's getting bad vibes from mm -hmm. this from this young acolyte. Um, but yet, Sam, it looks like he's going to be there for a while. He's going to be at the Citadel for a while, so he's going to need to... Well, it he's depends. He's going to get to know this person a bit, and Sorella's promised to look after him. So there's, you know, there could be a lot of chapters, Sam's next chapters, where it's him and Sorella and... I don't think there can be more than two, because he opens this chapter with, if Old Town is taken, Westeros will fall, so... Well, how long can Old Town hold off? There is this sense of um, the Ironborn closing in. Yeah. So how many chapters can we get? I mean, Sam's chapters we've we've already said are very dense. So we may only yes. get two or we three. We might only get most. two. One of them, one of them has to be the Ironborn getting into the Citadel, breaching whatever you know. Then that they get get through. Um, <clears throat> and there's Euron wandering, wandering, wandering around the citadel. There's got to be a chapter where Sam uses his ridiculous archery skills to kill, yeah. to to take it, you know, arrow through the eye. Yeah, I predict that's, what I have on my that's going to happen. I definitely predict that's going to happen. We're building up to it, and they're closing in. Just yeah. as Sam arrives at the Citadel, the Ironborn are closing in, and there's going to be he's going to, whether it's by accident or whatever. It's been mentioned too many times about his terrible archery skills. He's going to take somebody out who's significant, and it's going to be Euron. And I think that's going to be one of Sam's next chapters in Winds of Winter. Oh God! Uh, I yeah. my my concern is it seems like. Because of the show, people are very are convinced that Sam is going to end up in the North again. Mm. I don't know if there's time for that. Well, it, it, there's a lot of things that could happen. It could be that uh, we remember that Leo Tyrell is there as well, who's yes. a horrible like, blast from the past for Sam. Yeah. This is somebody who's like, oh, you're still craven. Again, mm -hmm. that plays into that he's going to do something really heroic in old town and everyone will be like whoa this is like sam, sam the slayer Craven, mm -hmm. sam the slayer but will is leo terrell still in contact with his family i'm guessing he is if he's just a novice could he be going oh my god you'll never believe who's just rocked up in old town only old sam tarley that then gets back to his father quite quickly because the tyrells and the tarleys are you know they 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 enforce they work together um yes yeah, so, um, so that needs to get north so yeah yeah that's that's for sure but i just there's like he's gonna have to race north well and that's I, what marwin said he needs to forge his chains so that he can he's going to be needed on the wall he needs to go back to the wall so yeah this a lot of this time skip really plays into like it wind, winds of winter suggests to me that something has to a major has to happen at the wall yeah and uh, now uh, Indiki, Grog Robert over at Indiki has a great theory that the horn has nothing got to do with the wall that it has to do with waking the Stark dead and that we'll get our ghost army similar to Lord of the Rings. Oh, right, okay. So yeah, yeah. that would be brilliant because mm. there's a reason that there has to be Starks in Winterfell and that's a great video. You should go watch it. It's, yeah, it's I will, yeah. Um, uh, Connie says, uh, those very old books Sam had to trade for passage, remember? Yeah, those mm. very old books. There might be something very important in there for sure. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I have with Sam. This yeah, is, that's it. It's my my favourite book. Love it. Yeah, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I'm still as confused as ever with Dorne, but there you go. Uh, yeah. So next week, dance, Varamir. Tyrion, yes. Danny, 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 forgot about Danny. Wow. Who's Danny? John, <laughs> Bran, Tyrion, all wow. three old friends that we yeah. haven't seen since. This is great, actually. I'm excited. I'm excited for Bran. <laughs> so, um, all right, folks, we will see you next week. Thank you so much uh, for joining us again this evening. And thank you, Claire. You're so, welcome. talk to you all next week, everybody. See you next week. Bye.